Okay, it's on air. It's live. All yes. right. So this is session one for Free the Demon Capital. Our milestone today is to amass an army of minions. Um, this is Jessica's character's milestone. Uh, Jessica, can you say hi in your character's name? Hello, everyone. I'm Cypher the Conqueror. Awesome. Okay. And then we'll just go left to right from my screen, which says, Aaron, you're first. Uh, yeah. Uh, Aaron, Blooded Zealot, Edward Brock. Edward Brock. Chris, who's your character? Um, Chris, and uh, my character is uh, Esprit, the Knife in the Dark. All right. And last but not least, Josh, who are you? I'm Josh uh, Velios, Seeker of Redemption. Okay. So in our game, there is a demon city that needs to be freed, this demon capital. I call it the city of Venevis. Venevis is this sort of floating city that exists in this weird sort of limbo, hell, dimension, space, place. Um, it hovers above a planet that's war-torn by thousands of years of ancient demons fighting. Um, it hovers and it's like the last bastion in this world of what is otherwise this sort of worn, battered world, a barren world um, of civilization is this city of Venevis. Um, Venevis is run by a demon prince. His name is Desmius and everyone knows that he is the grand overlord of this place. Um, selection of being people who can live in Venevis is, uh, um, is hard and difficult to achieve. But once you do, then you live in this society of demons in their cruel and harsh environment and their sort of competitive nature amongst one another. But all of our player characters exist currently outside of Venevis. Uh, for we have to eventually tell the story of freeing the demon capital. Um, in this first part, we're in this, the barren lands, the lands below Venevis. Venevis actually sits above the barren world, held up by waterfalls of what look like a green sort of water that crashes down and push against the barren surface and hold it up suspended. But these green waterfalls are not like water. They're more like green spirits, like ghosts of these demons that have died long ago. And the only moisture you get about being in that 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 liquid goo or ooze is this sort of ectoplasmic feel of horror so people don't actually want to stand it and in some ways people think that the barren lands underneath are almost like the sewers of venevis um venevis has one other way in and it is by these giant sort of conquering statues that can bend and contort to make themselves like a giant staircase up to the mighty city now the only way your characters know of getting into Venevis right now is to get one of the walking steps, these giant statues, to bend its will to get you, to suspend you and allow you back into the great city. Um, the only way that is known currently is to be anointed the demon lord of the lower lands at which they have to listen to you. And there is a war brewing amongst demons who want to become the demon lord of the lower lands. Okay. So, starting off, first we have our fallen angel. So, Josh, yes. a little backstory in your character. You fell to this place. This place, uh, this universe, this dimension, this world, um, the understanding of what it is beyond your character. But for us, as the storytellers here, it, it's like limbo. It's this weird dimension outside of the normal other worlds. It's like a lost sort of within a closet dimension. It's this whole place that has been forgotten by any importance of greater beings and angels and demons and yada yada. It, the demons that re reside here were, were left here from a great battle, forgotten in time and space that created Venevis. You have been cast away here. You are the fallen angel who fell into the castaway known only the hole that they threw the unwanted demons in long ago. <laughs> now, your character does not know why that happened. You only know that you fell through this spiral of light and bounced off of this city structure and rolled down a spiritual green waterfall 
and crash down below half-witted, half-conscious with, in your case, are they broken wings or are your wings no longer on you? Um, I think they were more of like a, I see them as a spectral thing and they just kind of aren't there. And now they're spectral with a green glow infused by these sort of spiritual echoes of ghosts that like linger within. You could think of like almost as if there was like a little smoky with like phantasms kind of glowing in out of the smoke that kind of infused your wings. So I would imagine a graceful creature like you now has this almost abhorrent feature. Right. Um, but the moments of you coming across this stream and waking up are brief and dim and kind of in and out. You were found by a blighted zealot. Aaron, your character, your character once existed within Venevis, but left because of the blight. Your character knows that the blight within Venevis has grown and continued to grow. And it's become a sort of corruption that is exuded from the, the city sort of city state itself. Um, and it is now flowing out to the barren lands, but you left before you knew all that. You left because you had the blights and you didn't want to spread it on. You knew it was foul and you, I don't know, maybe you thought it, you kind of liked the power yourself a bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, you purposely outcast yourself. You have some knowledge of sort of the hierarchy and structure. You are a person who had been on the courts of the demon courts and had seen Desmius himself. Um, so you would know a little bit of these characters if they come up and you have questions. But you now live in the lower lands, the barons, and you have come across this strange and angelic creature in a world that doesn't have angels uh, in the stream. So think of this, this is probably a little bit more of like backstory flashback bringing us to modern times. But if you had traveled basically along these green streams in this barren rough land and saw someone who looks innocent and probably like pure of skin and color and had only been tainted by the dirt and darkness of falling from the sky and such. <laughs> um, the person, uh, is, are there any descriptors you'd like to say, Josh, about your character? I mean, you don't have a halo anymore, but uh, is your hair like angelic gold locks or, you know? Uh, man, that's a good question. I actually didn't think about this. Really. That's okay. Um, yeah, I could just see it like, man, yeah, I don't got anything. <laughs> sure. That's okay. You think about it, and as it comes up, you just throw it at me if you want. But otherwise, all Aaron needs to know is you are a strangely innocent and graceful-looking being in this place that's used to more rugged and rough races and mixed of horror-looking features and, you know, like flame beings and shadow beings and demons with horns and tusks and wild raven men that, you know, maniacal tusks and crazy features of piercings and you are this like innocent human babe <laughs> you know untarnished skin is over this babe. bashing of falling it was your fall from grace but you do have these strange wings now yeah erin what would you do when you found this person being someone who obviously is is very stunned not only by beauty but by almost fear because of this this strange aura of, as you said, like, like peaceful, almost just like too pure. I would definitely be willing to help or even I would, I would be beckoned almost by this, but I also feel a small bit of that fear because she's so out of place. I feel as if though she may have come seeking to conquer, or maybe she could even be because of the way this world is, malicious your symbiote um Aaron, do you want to describe that a little bit the blight that consumes you and what that means to your character so that i'm not putting words in your mouth oh oh yeah no um so essentially uh it, it essentially works really in in kind of the same way that uh that venoms does except uh it it's it's definitely got a mind of its own so when when things happen both I and it can have 
some conflicting emotions and ideas, but I do have a decent bit of uh, mental connection and control with it. So if it if it is uneasy or if there are things that it it tries to uh, emotionally relay, I can definitely kind of have a swing. <laughs> you got muted by Jessica. <laughs> she was like, "You're done." <laughs> Oh, no. How does that unmute? I thought it would just mute him on mine. That's okay. That's okay. I can unmute him too. Okay. Uh, there's a little so arrow like box in unmute. the corner of them. And, yeah, oh, it's I'm showing sorry. them muted, but it's not showing an unmute. If you hit it again, it should unmute him. There you go. <laughs> oh, do it again. <laughs> She's just messing with you now. Oh, no, we're all trying to do it at the same time. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah. Okay, somebody else do it. I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> <laughs> My I don't think else can. Okay, there it is. Yeah, so I'm used to Discord. If I mute him, it just mutes him for me because I'm getting yeah. him twice. Sure. Uh, so, Aaron, just so you remember this, this moment that that just happened. Yes. So, don't forget the moment when she's about to have her glorious monologue that she just hit that little mute button. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, no. The demon capital turns into the mute wars. Yeah. Then again, then again, you are in the same room, so that's probably a bad idea. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, 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 yeah. up on the other mic. so the other thing about the symbiote is that it it is completely sealed in in the suit I am wearing. Unless I physically uh, release it in any way, it should not be able to uh, interact or escape. Uh, I guess also it, it's kind of hard to tell that I, I'm encased in it unless you either know or have seen it be released. So at first it's not uh, anything that would be of concern, but if it is released, it's probably a very quick and intimidating thing to see like large, dark, phantasmal kind of just something coming out of what I'm wearing. So, kind okay. of that. So, with that said, when you see this person sort of shimmering in the, the green stream that's just flowing in the air, kind of splashing, and has, has kind of the current, it's still a current, it's, but it's, it feels more like a harsh wind that has kind of pushed him ashore. Um, but he still is kind of has, has like the residue of it. But uh, your inner symbiote, um, we, need a, we should give it a name, right? Your inner Carlisle says, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your inner Carlton says, no, just, um, anyway, it, it beckons you towards it. it. You can feel the emotion of interest. It is uh, intrigued by this creature. It wants you to touch it. And I know that it, it wants to do this because obviously it is, it is made to consume and take what is unnatural and, and kind of like convert it. So I'm, I'm, again, a little worrisome, but I follow its lead. Excellent. Um, do you have any strategies that help you communicate with your symbiote or resist its temptations uh, or vice versa? Yeah, I do have, I have quite a bit of control. I have an expert level of control over it. Mm -hmm. And we also have a strong connection. Uh, but it definitely, again, can have moments where it can overpower because that, that is what it does. It consumes, it adapts, and it overpowers. Yeah. So... Let's give me a roll, a man. We, we need a roll here because we, we need a story outcome to see if anything interesting happens. Um, okay. So it's D10s, right? Yeah, you're going to roll two D10s. I generally use two different colors so that I know one's for my soul skill and one's for my strategy. Um, All right. I have uh, a success and a fail. Okay. I have a, um, a an imaginative success, a reality fail. Okay. And... What is the strategy? How does it word it? Uh, the strategy is blighted control. Blighted control. And it just, okay. It just gives me an overall understanding of like what it is trying to do and how I can use it to my abilities, okay. good or so bad. You would roll reason, blighted control. Mm -hmm. Does that change your successes or failures? Uh, sorry, I keep forgetting. It's not reality, it's reason. Uh, but yeah, it's... Uh, the, the that's reason a fun I've never heard attention. that before. Reality, that's cool. So you you rolled reason one d ten. You roll under it. 
Uh, no. Rolled okay. Over. And then the other D10, did you roll under your blighted uh, control? I did. Okay. Do you have any tags that would help you resist the forces if, for example, your blight was to go crazy and wanted to reach out and consume something? Um, is that a is that a strategy or would that be a relationship? Uh, I'm working on tags now. Do you have any tags that would help you in that situation? So you could I've have heard. the tags in the top left of your sheet, or you could have the tags that come oh, from your relationships. Oh. Yeah, uh, I have, I have stubborn, which could sure I could just. Just resist it completely with that, or re-roll it, obviously. Is that something you'd like to do? Um, Would you want to stubbornly resist the <laughs> out, outcry of this this being that lives on you as it gets closer? Now, when to it comes to, with the, uh, the re-rolling, mm -hmm. uh, just so I always know, sure. uh, it is, uh, anytime we roll, if we have a modifier for it, we can use it once. Or right now you have a four belief, so you can use anything below at four or below on the belief chart in the middle of your sheet. If you use the okay. hope or faith, which is at two or four, you have to spend two belief to use those. So it will lower your belief. But if you use the tag benefits at ratings of one and three, those are passive. So you can use either one. So you could right now be, you're basically can reroll one die of either type. So tag is passive, a tag. but yeah. hope, faith, and those cost. Exactly. So you okay. lose a passive ability if you spend your belief temporarily. We hit the next milestone, you probably gain more belief. Okay. Um, let's see. So the, the counter to what you said is that you also do have a pocket double success if something goes really wrong. You're like, no, 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 no. I need this to go right. It like your needs to go right. Yeah. But as of right um, now, there's no reason not to justify a tag and reroll and see if you get that anyway. Yeah, uh and then so with uh with the dice, uh do we do we normally pick one or the other and roll for it? Or do we just roll both and we kinda like figure out the plus minus or plus plus minus minus kind of outcome? I ask you what strategy you want to use. And okay. then you tell me what strategy is and how you want to use it. And then I usually confirm with you if I think that's imagine a reason. And you can, you know, maybe twist it up at that point if you're like, oh, well, I want to use imagine. So let's make, make it like this. And, and then which, once we get a result, I'll ask you if you want to use any tags. Or you can just kind of use a tag by telling, describing it further. Okay. And of course, at any yeah. time, if you just want to fail, you just tell me you fail. <laughs> you know, you don't, have to, you don't have to get the dice to tell you you fail, but. Yeah, that was actually something I was going to talk about, especially when it comes to moments where, like, it would be uh, like a really story crucial thing for me to just like fail against what is happening. I was wondering Certainly. if I could just be like, "Hey, it, tell me. Yeah. it's just going to happen." You roll the dice to see if you succeed. You don't need to roll them to see if you fail. <laughs> if you would epically fail, you just make it happen. You're like, okay. "This is what happened." Yeah. And it was bad. It was real bad. And this continues <laughs> to happen. And it's real bad. <laughs> the only time would, you would have to, we'd have to figure something out is obviously if it begins to harm other players directly. Like if it would kill outright, kill another player, then there'd be something we'd need because you know then obviously justify. Yeah, it, it, they probably would roll on that part, not you. You know, so. it's no longer a game if they're just dead. Yes. What? So <laughs> let's resolve the roll so we can move on and get to the next player. So okay. in your case, uh, did you want to use stubborn? Uh, I feel or are you like, okay with the one success, one failure, which is like you will succeed at controlling it, but there will be a catch to this. I, I feel like this is also a good way to figure out kind of how this will work. I think we're going to go ahead and go with the success fail and okay. kind of see where this goes. Certainly. All right. So, Josh, um, basically, you're just kind of like you open your eyes and you're in this weird place and there's these turbulent skies above you and the earth around you seems harsh and metallic and rough and you know with like a sort of martian sort of dirt redness that's around um and you would see this sort of person come towards you that has a strange powerful aura of darkness around him uh and it's something beyond aaron what you see of yourself because this is a character who sees auras 
like experiences them. Okay, yeah. So, you, right. Josh, you would get this glimpse as you're kind of going in and out of this character coming towards you that has like that sort of anime, like Ashira factor, uh, you know, like <laughs> this this f black fire that kind of goes around. Yeah, um, and almost as if, if if fire could see you, it all kind of like stops burning and starts reaching from him right. and he doesn't seem to move differently he's just walking towards you and as he gets closer you can see you can see that he's kind of like it won't go further than he wants and you see concentration in the character's face um but you can also see the sweat and the difficulty that the strain it is putting on this person so for what it's worth you just know it's kind of a tortured soul here is what it seems to you right okay so with that aside um, off yonder in a different direction, um, a nearby village, uh, for, and when I say village in the barons, these are mostly like tribes, right? So villages for the most part are kind of like nomadic. They pop up and they go, they get ripped or they get ripped apart or destroyed by I mean, roaming war bands. And then they pick up in a different place that might have, you know, some kind of water source to, to or, or, or local, um, things to hunt. That, that provided a, sta a stable place of desire for a little while. Um, one of these places that it has no name because it's just a camp uh, of multiple huts and tents, we have our evil scientist, our terrible evil villain <laughs> scientist I threw on there, I'm sorry. So Jessica, you're at one of these places. You yourself are also another person who doesn't want to be in this place. <laughs> you don't belong in this world. This is something that you don't know to be what you don't know much about. You know that you have a moon base that you can still see sometimes when the clouds separate and the, the turbulent war torn skies give you a glimpse of it um, far off on a moon that happens to shadow this weird dimension. But besides that, you are another person who fell very much like the fallen angel in this powerful like torrent of energy that shoots out of the the great city of uh of Venevis. and right out of the, the high tower where the demon prince himself sits there's like a beam of light that just shoots up into the sky into the great dark abyss of whatever's beyond which you know to be space but they don't necessarily know that you yourself travel down this light beam of energy coming from your your moon base and ended up on this planet, kicked out of Venevis, and you want to get home. And the only way you know to get back is back the way you came, through the Demon Prince's court portal. But to you, this place is full of these strange demon creatures. It's like some horrible 60s, 70s like sci-fi movie to you that never should have been reality that somehow you're stuck in. And you just want to go back to the comforts of your moon base. You probably actually want nothing more than to obliterate this place, but otherwise you're, you're still stuck here for now. Uh, and probably you want to get off before I obliterate it. Yeah, yeah. So you are in one of these war-torn band places. Um, you've had to move several times um, as there are constantly warlords who are fighting for some title that they think is important called the Demon Lord. Um, the newest group of people that has uh, been worthwhile to align yourself with is this creature known as Mentiak. Mentiak is a being of virtuous flame. He is contained within clothing, but otherwise his whole body is this fiery existence with like a face in the fire. And his minions are very much the same. Um, you yourself have had to show your laser burn tattoo to prove that you are one of his kind, that you are one of the burned. Otherwise, you would not be a loyal member to his faction. Um, that's why you're allowed to remain in this camp. Um, I'm sure it's not something your character is very fond of, of being having to be under some Mentiak creature. Uh, but Mentiak is very busy dealing with the Pestilent Horde, a group of shadow beings that like to appear and use the shadows to actually become manifest. And they like to stab and pierce things with many sharp needle-like objects. Um, so that's the kind of environment you're in. Uh, you also are here with another traveler who happens to be Chris's character, 
Chris is of a unique race that I should let him tell you about. Um, and he is very interested in getting to the city as well, because Chris, your character is dealing with a blight that has reached your lands, your your home islands of your tribal country of the of your uh, Kappa race. Um, the blight has reached there, and unfortunately, it has taken Esperia um, for the worst in the way that you're a race that is amphibious, and the dark black blight that is starting to take over her not only pales her, I'm sorry, darkens her skin, but it also dries her skin. And that is a condition that will kill her very shortly. Oh, man. Um, you, you are finding basically to find the source of where the blight is coming from, it is bringing you closer and closer to Venevis. And Venevis at this point below it, the taint has grown so much in most of the people that you've seen, you believe that the heart of where the taint or blight is coming from is from the great city itself. Okay, uh, so my my character isn't uh, is covered always. Um, you, you don't have no idea what he actually looks like, um, but he's slightly hunched. He has uh, reversed legs, the the reverse knee. <laughs> um, well, really, it's it's a long ankle is what it is. Um, a long ankle. <laughs> yeah. Like cat feet. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're strong, and he, he has a, a tendency to um, come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but he has a, a cloak that he's always wearing. Um, he's always covered. And when you do get glimpses of his his body, in quotes, it's uh, it looks to you like metal. Hmm. Metallic. Um, like to anybody else, it's just shiny skin, you know, really. To that point, but since you have a moon base, <laughs> since you have a moon base, <laughs> the two of you know each other. Um, mm -hmm. You have found Semsoas in the companionship of this person, um, Jessica. Your character, um, sorry, Cipher, has yes. one minion right now, and it is <laughs> this person. It is one minion. Esprit. Esprit is your one minion, and you use the laser burn that you had the tattoo to say that he is yours and that is that's your claim over the person um that has allowed him to also stay in this camp now that also is the reason why i'm assuming you <laughs> esprit also knows her to be conniving because <laughs> she she saved you by a, a, a sweet lie if you will <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm here you're in, this, in public you're in this camp um both of you wanting to get to the city, one of you to get to the city so that you can ultimately leave, the other so that you can get to the city and hopefully find the source of the blight or a cure for the blight. Um, but as it stands right now, you're both in this camp. The only way you need to go up is to become the demon lord. And there are two warlords here that are fighting over it. And you happen to be aligned with one of them at the time. <laughs> okay. Um, could I could I roll? Uh, I want to sneak around the camp and try to, to get a, a handle on how uh, Mentioc controls the uh, the rest of his army. Sure. And to see if it could be subverted. Sure. Um, can I use that for that? Of course you can. Okay. Um, I think that's probably reason because you could take all the time you need. Uh, Jessica, is there anything Cypher's doing? Cypher coming up with an elaborate plan. <laughs> was totally my idea for him to keep around, uh, for him to sneak around and uh, Excellent. see what he can figure out. I, I sent him on that mission. mission <laughs> what I think. I, I would be okay with you also having some high-tech gadget that allows you to communicate with him. Okay. Yeah. I like could if have you want to give him like a like an evil pin, fan club member pin that like lets you <laughs> see and talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, you know, our, our suit, I, my, my suit has a little bit of uh, tech in it. My, my, my self-immolating armor has a little bit of, you know, technology into it where it can, it can receive uh, simple radio waves. Um, Chris, I, I got two successes. Yeah, give me a roll. Yes, so you rolled Reason Espionage. You got two mm -hmm. successes. All of you, so you know, if you ever roll doubles, which is, you know, two of the same number, I need to know because it's a critical of whatever type. It can yeah. be critically awesome, critically bad, or critically both. 
Yeah. <laughs> so you get a double success. So the quick run to the mill is that there are many tents in uh, other sort of like shanty, like put up sort of like tents, uh, canopies, pavilions, um, wooden structures, like, you know, quick, limited time use put up things. Um, there are many members of Man uh, Mentiac's army, which is really just a, a horde of these sort of like flame beings. But you also have learned that he can spawn creatures into these flame beings. They can take an oath to him and he can basically burn them alive. And by doing so, which you are kind of familiar with the self-immolate thing, but he can <laughs> immolate them, at which then they become one of his. You do seem to think that they become loyal soldiers at that point. You don't know more than that, but they all seem to be, I mean, they have to swear an oath first, but then they become very loyal subjects. He does seem to be virtuous in some ways. He is like an idealist fanatic for a demon. Okay. Um, he, he does believe that he is the hand of justice and that he is the redeemer and the one true demon lord of the lower lands. And he will restore the, these lands to prominence when he becomes the demon lord. So he has some uplifting things in a world that is not uplifting. Um, <laughs> but ultimately he is a demon and he gets his way by having a horrible rage and wrath. Now you do know that he is set to defeat uh, the, the pestilent horde. He is high in their tail. And while there are many warlords that are dealing and trying to fight for this title of demon lord, they are the only real threat left, and he has them on the run. Um, from the talkings of the other, of the army, basically, for lack of a better word, you can understand that he believes that within one more battle, he will he will take in enough of their will and soul from them that they will give to him and no one will challenge his right as the demon lord he thinks that as demon lord he will then get the walking steps to return and grant him access up to the the ancient city of Phanevis. because as a demon lord they must grant his request mm -hmm. okay. so that that's that's the raising that his people are excited they believe that they're going to return to the great city under the the new hospitality of one of the great demon lords Right. Uh, they, they feel like they've already won this battle. But after all of that, after you've kind of spied, listened to people mingled and sort of entered little groups of people circling around a fire, bullshitting around with, you know, booze, um, as you return back to see um, Cypher, you can't help but notice two strangely like, different creatures. Um, one would be Aaron's character. Uh, and Aaron, how would you be bringing uh, Josh's character with you? Uh, hmm. Would you carry him over your shoulder? Would you uh, give a cart or something? <laughs> yeah, no, it it would probably be, it would probably be an over the shoulder. Uh, I really don't. So, is is Josh's character large? Uh, being an angel, I have no really idea of the size. Um, I'd say it's probably no larger than any than. Most, but I mean, you notice that he's definitely um, on the muscly side, I guess. <laughs> Strong, like he's buff. He's, he's Cause, battle yeah, born. Because I mean, this, this could really change. Because if if I really have to like personally struggle with this, I might have to use the symbiote to carry her, which also entails when the party meets me, they know that something like with Chris's character, it would connect to the fact that I have what he is chasing in the kingdom because he can physically see that. Or maybe we have it come up later. I don't and know, I like it. I like it when you started talking about it. I was thinking like, how, how do I make you go berserk right now and show him that you are some <laughs> crazy Zen monk that has the control over the blight because that will like make him obsessive. <laughs> yeah. yeah, because then he can obviously see that I have uh, like you said, some control. So I think that's the way we want to go about it. I'm having to use the blight to to suspend her body because she is just too large for me personally. Certainly, and you're also trying to keep it at bay because it it, it like it's fascinated with with him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, sorry, Josh. It is him, right? Just to make sure. Oh yeah. Sorry. Okay. Oh, no, okay. no, no problem. Oh, okay. So, oh, no problem. Cool. Sorry. I just want to make sure that sometimes <laughs> yeah. you talk about angels, you start talking about all these terms that make it sound feminine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm having to physically strain with my control and the fact that she or he is rather 
massive. Sure. Now, which strategy are you using? Uh, obviously the control. Okay. And so it sounds like imagine control because you have two things you have to do, right? You have mm -hmm. to resist the, the forces yeah. of it and you're trying to use the control of it to do something um, uh -huh. beyond controlling you. It's like controlling it to make it, you know, manipulate it. So, so roll imagine uh, and your control. All right. We got a double fail there. Yes. Do you have any tags you'd like to use? <laughs> Um, it's worth mentioning that in Dream Chaser, when you get double successes, everything kind of you imagine goes right. When you get a double fail, it's not like, you know, hey, I just didn't lockpick the door, I'm going to try again. It's <laughs> like, no, you either broke the lock forever, or, you know, you broke the lock, and behind it was the guy who you didn't want to see, who sees you break, you know, break the lock with your lockpick, you know. Uh, something bad will happen of it. Uh, I feel like... I feel like I'm not saying wanna... that that's a bad thing for a story, but it's, you know. <laughs> yeah, I feel like I don't want uh, this to go terribly wrong, but I think we'll go ahead and uh, spin two belief and we'll change one to a success. Okay. Do you want to use a tag first? You can still use a tag before you blow your belief. Well, so the tag is burned if used, correct? Nope. Nope. Oh. Tags are passive. You can use them all the time. Oh, I thought, I thought when you had mentioned earlier, it was that we used it. It was, it was gone until we got another. No, just, Faith just the thing. Yeah, the thing you're about to use is what would happen. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then, forever. okay. So then, we can go ahead and do that. Then we'll. Sure. Will you? Well, I don't know. Stalwart or stubborn? Because strong. Uh, it it will definitely be either of them. Okay, uh, but you have to you have to tell me how that I'm improves out. things, because you got to justify it by yeah, kind of okay. improving the scene with it. Yeah, uh, I'll reroll one of them using stalwart because uh, okay. I feel like it is going to try and overcome me, so I will be un unmoved, I guess, by its uh, its Certainly. mental okay. or its physical control. Again, that sweat is beating at the sides of your head, but your focus is yeah. immaculate, right? You are immovable. All right. Roll that die and see if it helps. All right, and we did get a success with that. Excellent. Okay. So you have one success and one miss. So you succeeded holding at bay in moving the, mm -hmm. the, the angel with you. Um, Josh, you, the angel, you feel this weird energy holding you and it awakens you it alerts your senses um you you feel as if you were being like cradled in sin uh which is something that's very dark and uh, horrible for an angel um you, you just see you're looking up into the sky as you're kind of being suspended but around you can see the dark energy that's somehow around you but not touching you it's very close to you um does it make you do anything? Um, I do think I would try to at least, uh, I wouldn't say struggle, but maybe, I'm going to say, I probably try to roll off. How conscious am I now? Am I fully conscious? You are fully conscious as you are alert. OK. Um, so I, I, I feel the, I mean, as you said, it's feels sinful, so I'm I'm very taken aback by it. So I try to like roll off, almost to like break its hold on me to to at least get a glimpse of what's happening. Sure. So, um, is there something you want to roll, or in this case, I'm okay with you just being cinematic about it. Um, yeah, I'm okay with just just trying to roll off right now. No, okay. No, no specifics. I think it's very cool that you kind of coming off, you would probably be used to having these wings to use, but they're not exactly wings like how you normally use them anymore. Um, maybe they allow you to sort of ungracefully come to your feet without like crashing, but maybe they force you to tumble or something is, is because you're caught off guard by it. You're like, oh, I'll just flip off and my wings and I'll... <laughs> yeah, um, so I I like roll off and like hit the ground maybe like awkwardly and roll to my feet, like roll to my, like on my hands and knees almost. Okay. Um, with this, 
Aaron, your character. Sorry, I have to keep the names in front of me. The oh yeah, uh, Edward, Edward Brock. So Brock, you at that moment, there's this moment of tribulation where that symbiote kind of racks you to your knees to keep the focus mm -hmm. that you need. So all this delivers is that for um, for Esprit, Esprit, you see as you're returning back to uh, you return to the mastermind <laughs> with the grand plan of espionage. Mm -hmm. um, as you're about to arrive, there is a strange character that seems to be floating another individual above him in the suspended energy of all this blackness that you know immediately is the blight. But you've never seen anyone control it. At first glance, you probably thought it was one of these sort of shadow creatures of the pestilent horde mm -hmm. because it, it, it's a it's a black energy. But you would mistake it nowhere you know as soon as you look over you're yeah. like oh it must be the shadow energy you're like no wait and then you see the person who is consumed by it fall to their knees but they look almost like meditative and stoic as they're in some kind of like trance if you will but whatever they were suspending up in the air a, a sort of winged elegant creature kind of stumbles falls and tumbles nearby and he, he doesn't have like any touch of the blight on him at all? No, even after being suspended by it. Um, okay. Actually, if anything, this creature is the most uh, opposite creature you've seen of <laughs> someone who would be consumed by the blight. Um, okay, I'm going to blink up behind him. Sure. And I was also going to mention that the two yeah. of them, the two of these people with how they look and appear, not that you're in a world where everyone doesn't look different, uh -huh. but these are two unique individuals compared like to races that you're used to like completely dichotomous almost yeah they look like okay. two unique beings you've never seen before kind of okay i mean aaron, aaron still has more uh sorry um aaron is or uh Eddie. Brock. brock has more of a look of a demon but that's kind of because of his clothing style like the suit he has and stuff but but him as an individual looks different okay so um yeah i definitely want to like blink behind him sure. um not obviously like you know quietly okay uh to to see if i can see how the blight is being controlled kind of thing sure and you uh, know you okay. just pop up behind them you're in no difficult situation for this they're not paying yeah. any attention to you um, <laughs> right. so you pop behind them and you can see kind of like the torrent of energy that is obviously kind of emanating from um brock's character that it is kind of receding back towards him, but it does seem to be this sort of energy that you can feel there's almost like a fight going on, like a struggle. Okay. Um, so, you know, if it was you or me in real life looking at this, it does feel very much like a monk dealing with the torment or something, you know, like a, a dark passenger or possession, but, but still winning. You know, there's this yeah. weird calm and stoicism that you've never seen before going on. The level of control, especially the blight, it seems to be using the blight almost like as a tool. Mm-hmm. And then the strange creature that you can tell wants nothing to do with it, who just rolled off and tumbled and looks yeah. a little disoriented, but seems also like as if they were worried about being endangered by the blight. Okay. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go up to Velios, mm -hmm. uh, you know, quickly and start kind of like poking and prodding at him <laughs> and like, like kind of like trying to see if he's got like any touch of the blight on him. So I, I, I kind of, I kind of like start like moving him a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> can um, we can we see you? Uh, since I know you are cloaked. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I I don't look very um, solid really because the the vorpal cloak is kind of uh, it's like tumbled around me, so it's more like a okay. a blob of darkness almost. Um, but it's clothing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. What is okay. how is this? Blight. But that was Blight, yes? <laughs> I respond, uh, strained. Just give me a second. It's a little hungry, I guess, would be a way to explain it. Fascinating. Um, are it's you a big own. guy? Um, no, I, I'm... Well, I, I'm definitely... Uh, size comparison, much smaller than the angel. Would you be big enough for me to climb? Uh, you could probably <laughs> get, yeah, you could probably get on top of me. <laughs> okay. How big are you, Chris? <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty small. 
Um, I'm probably four or five feet. If if you guys are six and seven feet tall, I'm probably five, six, five, five, four, four to five feet tall. Okay. Um, but I'm hunched over and right kind of like, like you would, uh, man, like the, kind of like the, the Raven race in D&D. &D. Okay. Yeah, they're yeah. Takra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kind of like low to the ground, uh, very quick, very nimble. So I, I climb up on top of you and try to like probe to see how you're containing the, the blight. Right. <laughs> when you when you climb on me, uh, there will be a almost a physical wave of, of something you can feel uh, that scans where you touch through the suit. Okay. So that you can, you can kind of know that it's contained but it definitely reaches for you. Okay, I, I blink off back to Velios. Meanwhile, Josh, is there anything you want to do? Yeah, I, I stumble back a bit and I put my hand out and I'm like, I just, uh, you know, the sheer amazement of where I am, have no idea. I kind of look at both of them and I'm like, I, I where am I? What? Uh can you roll Imagine Divine Hand for me? Yeah. And then if, if he's not standing, um, by the time I blink off of Edward, um, I'll help him to his feet. Okay. Oh, man. Uh, I feel bold. Okay. Do you have any tags that would help you? Oh no no Josh, you gotta say that right, man. You critically failed. Oh, oh yeah. Did he... yeah, sorry, double nine. <laughs> okay. All right. Um that's really funny. <laughs> sorry, because I'm you like should... <laughs> I didn't expect that. All right, so you, you should definitely try to find a tag for that. <laughs> so, generally what happens when, when when that situation goes is I throw it to the players and we go, all right guys, what's the worst thing that could happen right now? But you don't know the stage why I had a roll. Um, <laughs> right, right, right. So so what happened was Innately, as your fallen angel, your your divine powers allow you to transcend language. They allow you to like basically not have to ever worry about what languages people speak. Because <laughs> you you like know the voice of God and like your divine power allows that translation. Gotcha. But unfortunately, <laughs> you lost that ability. Yeah. So you just basically you're like hands begin to glow and as you were standing up and you, you felt as if like your head was getting warm and that this like sort of thin light elevator music would come to your ears. <clears throat> the language of both of them speaking started to sort of unravel in the air and should have became words you understood, but never quite got there. <laughs> so yeah. So you, you were staring at these two individuals who you have no idea what they're talking about. And you see one consumed by this energy and another kind of, I, I think you were kind of climbing on them at this point. Yeah, yeah. Curious and even. They Just... are unique creatures that you've never seen before. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to think now, all of the voices in this encampment at the moment <laughs> are all of it like, uh, it's the Peanuts language. It's all like, <laughs> confusion and you are and now starting to see like beings made of fire like they're they're entrapments of like you know they're like the the loincloth around their waist or the the bandolier along their chest or if they have a a, a weapon like a club or a sword is strapped to the back but otherwise their physical body just seems like a manifestation of fire you know so you're seeing these strange creatures walking around demons which you know what demons are but these are yeah. mixes of more civilized versions because they don't live in the world where there's this great war of angels and demons. This is like a, a a part of that army that never made it to the great war and has been detached for thousands of years. Right. They're just living. So, you know what I mean? So. Um, yeah. So I'd be amiss to say I go into some kind of a uh, fury-ish kind of state. You could, where, yeah. Um, because seeing <laughs> demons, not understanding what the hell's going on. Um. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> nearly consumed by a blight. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm probably going to start throwing punches soon. So. And like you said, um, you don't even know. 
like you seriously like I, I did kind of like cinematically rush through it a little bit but like right. you, the, the the last thing you know of your home or your world like you have it's like memento in this way that like you kind of know that oh wait those voice oh it's gonna make sense in a second and then it doesn't but Bam. you don't know why you know that okay yeah it's like so, the loss of yeah of what i was almost you fell through like you everyone here can look basically above and if, if you couldn't if the city itself didn't block your view you would be able to see this great torrent of light just stretches straight up into the vast echoes of space or wherever you know beyond anything you can imagine and it's this big you know geyser of energy you fell through that basically like bounced off the tower like tumbled down this great spire of the demon prince and then fell beyond the reach of the, the the city itself into one of these streams that basically you know billowed your fall and then took you down here you know so you were rough and tumbled up but yeah like that's all you know and then you were like in some weird vision of hell right now so what i'm gonna attempt to do I'm, <laughs> um seeing as i don't exactly know what's going on with my wings i'm gonna sure. attempt to kind of elevate myself off the ground um yeah and i don't i don't know uh i think i'm kind of surveying like what either if i think this is strategically like smart to do anything physical or actually try to just get the hell out of there <laughs> sure um is there a strategy you want to use to try to figure it out um, would this be like your battle born instincts or yeah i think so like a strategic like uh almost like a battle plan kind of physical like sure thinking it sounds like imagine battleborn okay let's hope i don't do that sure <laughs> i roll two nines <laughs> <laughs> so pete can can we uh use tags on critical roles no okay yeah uh, the cool thing about critical roles is that they break everything else um if you if you roll a critical role Tags can no longer be used for you or against you, and nice. you can't belief your way out of it. Very cool. So it's the only thing that trumps everything. So that, there is the one kind of game where like, hey, I'm going to use my tags before I spend belief. But then if you end up rolling a critical, you're stuck with it. So. And I'm having a very bad day. You are having a very bad day. I didn't critical this time, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> but I definitely failed. <laughs> OK. Um, any tags you'd like to pull in? Um, and don't forget, especially in a situation like this, you can pull for your relationships. Like I know you have a drive for your your angel companion or partner. You know, like if that could give you inspiration or could give you comfort or you know remind you of a battle that you know yeah, your keen say, observation like, helped. You know that kind like, of stuff. Yeah, thinking of like me and her, like uh, actually like in the heat of battle, like you know, like we had this one crazy battle that we were uh, kind of behind and the strategy we came up with kind of like won the day kind of thing and it just like inspired me like to, to I don't know I, I could sure. I use that um, you got it so reroll one of those failures I don't know if there was two but reroll one <laughs> yeah, it was definitely two failures okay um, <laughs> Do I pick which one it is? Or yes. Or? You pick which die to re-roll, yeah. Um, I'll re-roll the Battleborn. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to that belief chart. Right now, since you haven't spent any belief, you have the one and three abilities, which allow nice. you to re-roll either one. Okay, but... sorry. Okay. How'd you do? So, yeah, re-rolled, re got a two, so I passed. I have cool. success. Okay. So you were trying to gauge the air. What, what are you trying to gather about the place um basically whether i have a chance of fighting my way out or if i should just flee to re, okay. kind of re, re reassess the situation sure you do not believe you could fight your way out because of the numbers um you could be wrong you just don't know how powerful any of these beings are and right, you yeah. live in a world where one being could be stronger than a thousand, you know? So it's for you, 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 it's easy to overestimate strength because you know of how great strength can be. Now, the downside is 
that when you fly up and scope the area, you are also scoped in the way that you attract the attention of a warlord who wishes to become the demon lord because you are the most unique individual he's seen all day and you just so happen to be struggling to fly right. but also the only individual who has wings here um meanwhile as that's happening um chris i know you mentioned that you wanted to do something so please um and aaron you have complete control of your your gifts your <laughs> your gifts or your Bains. So you can stand up and do what you wish. You just know that uh, Velios is now just slightly in the air, a little off from the rest of the group, and that you have this uh, uh, Kappa individual that's kind of climbing. Yeah. Um, um, no, I, uh, I have something that will happen after Chris. Yeah. As, as soon as as soon as the uh, the blight starts to kind of reach out at me, I, I blink away to where uh, Velios was uh, was getting up. Um. And he's like, how how high did he? Is he like in the air at all, or how high did you go, Velios? Uh, uh, probably only a few feet off the ground. Sure, you can tell that his wings are. He's struggling to fly. Okay. okay. Um, I should mention at this point that to the both of you, the fact that he has wings make him one of the rare individuals that, if you are a winged individual, you could fly back to the great city. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, you can both also tell he's really struggling just to stay 10 feet up in the air. <laughs> but, but that is a coveted feature yeah. of anyone who is landlocked in this place, especially since the steps have walked away. And conveniently so, it has attracted the attention of Mentiak, who is basically okay. like the wannabe demon lord and yeah. in charge of everyone here at this encampment. And you can all hear basically the fire um, raging as when he comes in your direction, the heat comes with him, and he is a larger than life individual. Ugh, and you can man. tell that he is from point A to point B moving in this direction from uh, across the camp. He's not here yet, but yeah. Oh man, the heat, the heat. If Mintiak hadn't seen him, I'd get up there and, and try to hide him in the cloak, but uh, you still might have time. Yeah. I'm. I'm thinking I'm going <laughs> to, this is going to get me hit by an angel. <laughs> I'm going to try to, to, uh, blink on him and then hide him with my, with my warple cloak. And, uh, what I'm going to say is, is being, you, you need to stop your Mintiak is, is going to try to capture you and okay. use you for his own schemes. Oh, I don't is, believe it'll translate. And nothing translates. <laughs> it's going to be great. Um, uh, Brock, Edward Brock, is there anything you want to do? I mean, obviously, this is kind of happening around you. So, so uh, as as with earlier, uh, the blight is is agitated, obviously, because um, he uh, he had already jumped and climbed on me. So, uh, the being that he wants to consume and a being that he has no idea uh, <laughs> why uh, was just uh, covering me. Uh, so, seeing. <laughs> Seeing the angel rise up and seeing a large flame lord, the 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 blight in my suit uh, wells and ripples very strangely, and uh, my danger sense or its danger sense kicks in, and it it throws me almost uh, like like almost innately away from everything. So I am I I am almost just like rolled uh, a good sure. distance away just by all of this going on. So I am I am flung and thrown, and as as I am I am figuring out what has happened because uh, of all of this, and I look up to see the strange creature now attempting, from what I can tell, to either uh, capture or uh, to hide for his <laughs> own for his own deeds. Yeah, uh, this this large flying being that I was I was just enamored with uh, okay. so it's well, give me a strategy because i just need to know if you get flung in the right direction if you okay. get flung in a way that hurts oh, you Mentioc. if you get flung in a, you know that's what I <laughs> yeah you get flung into mentiac now <laughs> yeah uh yeah the, the strategy will be my danger sense sure uh, but yeah i guess i guess i definitely need to roll for that because i was just going to say i completely lose it but now it does kind of come up that it, it could be a very bad thing if it just 
innately flings me somewhere. That that or if you get hurt or um also like if if right now it's mad at you and it doesn't want to help you because you've been kind of stubbornly telling it what to do. So yeah. just these kinds of things. Because if okay. you, you remove yourself from the situation, then you might not be there for Mentheox Rage, which is advantageous. So you know, I got it. That's why <laughs> the dice yeah. of the lords have to tell us what happens at this point. Yeah, so I think I think we'll go uh danger sense reason. So that will sounds fair. All right. And roll with our dice. Nice. And it's pretty literal danger sense. <laughs> and I get I get a double success, I but see. no uh, no double. Sure. Yeah, you no just critical. tell me double or critical, that's fine. Um okay. yeah, everything you just said happened. So you got okay. flung away in the perfect amount of space that you wanted, seeing that strange creature kind of blink up in the air towards the angel. <laughs> and continue on, please. Is there anything else you wanted to do? Um I guess, I guess, just as as that's kind of all going on, I I almost uh, what what would the word be? I almost want to uh, instinctively, as uh, as I guess you could, let the angel because I obviously don't know. Let the angel know that he's in a very bad position, both <laughs> visibly and uh, emotionally, for what everything is going on. And I feel like I just I just start uttering in my own language, our language, whatever it may be, uh, some cautions to what he is doing. But it, it it seems to be of no avail, and almost just keeps striking him with more and more gibberish. <laughs> like, like he's just getting information that makes no sense. <laughs> well, and he he's got a lot of like sensory things happening at the same time. Right oh yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and then Chris, you mentioned so you jump up on his, you blink up there. Yeah, and, and you, I, I try to cloak him in in my in my cloak. Okay. Um, we should probably make it a roll. Yeah, uh, it could be blinking if you just do it in one fell swoop. Um, it yeah, can yeah, be, that's what I was thinking is blinking. Yeah, it's probably blinking. Yeah, um, probably imagine because obviously usually blink mm -hmm. just to get you to somewhere, not to grab right. somebody with your cloak. Right, right. In the air. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. I definitely succeeded on the strategy, uh, and I tied the skill. Um, but uh, Got since, under. yeah, yeah. So, but since um, since I'm using the Vorpal cloak to hide him, mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to nice. reroll for hiding. Sure. And by the way, audience, he's got a relationship with this Vorpal cloak that gives him the tag of hiding, so it's self-explanatory. Okay, so um, still a failure. So one success, one failure. Okay. All right. So, um, Velios, like the wind behind you, something comes out of thin air. You can kind of like your senses senses can kind of tell that like as if, you know, like the the sun's blocked a little bit or there's a little bit of shadow. You can feel like your battleborn senses let you know that something is immediately behind you, and above you, and. You hear some words come out of its mouth. It's more gibberish, but like whispered as if they're real close to you. But one word does make sense, and that word is mentiac. And uh, when that word is spoken, your head has this database of names. And true demon names, like true names of any kind, are understood by any angel. And you recognize that as the name of a demon. You may know more information if you think hard on it, but it does. it's the one word that makes sense. And you can clearly see that there's an individual that almost seems like he's growing in size as he walks towards you and is burning in flame. But it's a vibrant, um, it's a vibrant um, flame that's, you know, just wavering all over him. And he seems to be respected as clearly like the war chief or leader of this uh, army or, you know, a horde and is moving your direction towards you. You are clearly in the sights of Mentiak and you know with hearing that name that this is the being associated with that. Uh, <laughs> and there is a cape that is wrapping around you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, since he succeeded, he will get you in the cloak and make you disappear. But something bad happens to him, and it's very clear that it probably happens because of you. So what bad happens to him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, man. 
you know, you can hit him, you can knock him down, you can you um, can disappear in the cloak and he could land on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh seeing as he's so small, yeah. um I actually don't find him uh super uh what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> um um threatening <laughs> um so i think i attempt to grab him by the throat huh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. so the two of you are both in the air and you right. are invisible okay. but you um, have are holding him uh, is it one hand or two hands or like are you strong um, enough to hold suspend him um i probably i I would probably, I, I just reach with one hand. Almost like grabbing a sword. Kind of sure. like attempting to grab him. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> no, you can, it happens. Yeah. Okay. So I grab him, and I, I don't know if I, I'm trying to think, I, I, I'm probably freaking out because of the demon. So. Yeah, probably a little bit. <laughs> um, is there any way, anywhere to actually go that's, nearby that actually like would be like how barren is it right now in the area is there any sort of like i don't know rock formation sure no yes definitely and at this time you will quickly recognize even as you were you know angered and raged and holding the person by the throat you will quickly recognize that you do believe the two of you were invisible you, okay, so you, is, there, there's some sense of the cloak that you realize that, wait a okay. minute, this person did try to hide me, even though I can't understand what he's saying. It may not click right away that I should let him go or something. But you, <laughs> you're okay. trying to make sense of it all. But you do clearly see rock formations around, and you are kind of near the heart of this encampment. So there's a lot of structures, even if they're dainty. Okay. You know. Um, I mean, I'll attempt to kind of... You do happen to see one tent in particular that there happens to be a person looking out in your direction as if it can almost see you and is kind of holding the flap in a way to like protect the view from like Mentia, uh, Mentias, okay. Mentiac, sorry. <laughs> I forgot my own names. Okay. okay. Well, yeah, if I glance over and I could see that, then I'm going to attempt to uh, almost swoop in there. Okay. Or to towards it, at least. Awkwardly float. All right. right. Is that Jessica's character? Of course it is. Okay. So, yeah. um, what the player, what the audience doesn't know is Jessica had to go take a phone call or something. So we we conveniently wrapped around her. We didn't skip her for like thirty minutes, but we just we know she's back now, so we're bringing her back. Um, so, uh, Cipher, you saw the your turtle friend your turtle friend sorry that's, that's almost <laughs> diminutive uh, <laughs> you see your pet turtle <laughs> uh, he is. He is my uh, <laughs> you saw him playing with a couple of new interesting play things nearby probably stomping your foot and wait chomping at the bit like come on tell me what i need to know you're my minion and you're playing um you've heard you can feel if not hear that mentiak is moving in this direction Every, it's like everyone of the camp like innately knows him. He is like the alpha of the tribe. There, there's a, an aura he has. Um, so you know that something has drawn his attention in this direction. And um, you kind of hide yourself and you're in your own projects from him. You see them um, in this strange angel creature or whatever. And uh, they are hidden. They're invisible. So the next thing you know is that basically the flap that you're holding in front of you, you feel like a gust of wind as these two will crash <laughs> within your tent yeah. <laughs> um, because he can't fly very well. And um, at which when they crash and probably roll, that will disengage the, the cloak. And you'll see both of them probably rolling and knocking over some of your shit. But <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Sloppy minion. <laughs> In this strange individual, which just to highlight because you were here, is that the the person is just like this sort of angel person in a place where there's nothing like that. Now she does look. I uh, sorry, she he does look like he's got some bruises and some dirt stains, and his hair is a little ragged, and you know his his white whitish clothes have like you know dirt smudges and stuff. But like no one wears white, you know, like you don't see white clothes. Yeah. <laughs> 
He's got like perfectly tan skin, but like tan in that sort of like golden sense, not in that like you know over tanned or orange or dark. You know. <laughs> talking Donald Trump here. So it is a unique individual, is what I'm trying to tell you. M mistress, I I mistress. sure. <laughs> I uh, I I got this creature. He's got wings. Uh, Mintiak has seen him though. And is interested as well. I, I don't think he saw where he went though. Where we went though. He does seem like he could be useful for our mission. <laughs> yes. You, what is your name? <laughs> um, I'm guessing I still don't understand her. Uh, <laughs> you know, we'll give it to we'll give it to her that she, for whatever reason, since she is of a normal mortal form, not of this planet, that she can okay. understand. Okay. Um, I would say you're almost excited to hear something yeah. that's like actually <laughs> language. I'm like, my eyes go wide, and I'm like, I totally understood what you said. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm glad I am speaking to you. <laughs> yes, you are the. That's great. The only person you understand is the condescending a hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> I don't have much uh, comprehension of the uh, sarcastic, like, uh, a-hole so it's, it's almost like I'm like, yeah, sure. Um, uh, I am Belios. Uh, where am I? <laughs> you were in my tent. Uh, I mean, in the grander scheme of things, where am I? <laughs> that sounds, sounds pretty grand to no, your character. No. <laughs> Wait, can we understand him? <laughs> yeah, conveniently enough, for whatever reason, you all understand him. Okay. It's like, we're in, we're in Mintiak's camp. There's that name again. <laughs> yeah, every time Mintiak's mentioned, you you know yeah. that word. And it, it, it's not a... <laughs> it's not a good, not a good word, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the unbridled rage kind of fills my eyes, and I'm like, you are in league with the demon. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, in league with one of them. Uh, <laughs> um, meanwhile, just for a second, Aaron, yeah, no you um, you saw them disappear in the air. Yeah, uh, I, is, I is definitely anything? saw. Yeah, I definitely saw uh, them leave. But then I I saw the commotion with the the front of a tent, and I heard some things. They they couldn't have been too far away. So there's definitely something yeah. I hear. But I also do notice. Uh, Mentioc is is still advancing. Yes, and that's kind of what I was getting to is that um, Mentioc gets to the position where they were, and sort of like looks around, and he's a kind of a towering figure. Think of like again, almost like a Greek god figure, but made of fire. You know, there's just the way of like his kind of armaments and uh, what he kind of clothing he would wear. You know, as if he would have a big bold chest, but instead it's made of fire and. Uh, his head is almost like like the the, the ghost rider. Like it's it's not a yeah. skull, but it's almost like made of stone. That's like hovering within this fire that's burning, and he he probably stands like fifteen feet tall. You know, like a titan almost in that way. Not gigantic, but huge. And uh, you know, probably like five eight feet wide or something. You know, just a big bulking person. Um, and he like looks around and when he, he has this stoic surveillance, you know, as he just kind of not spins, but just his head kind of does almost this. like a century. He just, he, he has something he's definitely looking for. Yeah. And he then looks in your direction and he points at you, which it, there's like a flame that almost crackles that comes out. And that's the point. It's like, <laughs> yeah. And he's probably maybe, I don't know, a like hundred, 200 feet away from you. Cause you, you slung yourself. Um, mm -hmm. But Mentiak knows all of the people in this camp because anyone who is under his protection, he knows. And you are not one of them. So you stand out as he looks at you and makes that snap crackle. And even as if he was five feet away from him, you hear his voice that just carries to you. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. did you do with them? Where did they go? I have just as little information as you do. I, <laughs> I've I've come to this 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 lowland, and I come upon what what I believe to be uh, 
the, the holiest thing I've ever seen. And then a strange creature crawls on me. It, I, I'm used to strange things crawling on me, but it's it, it's very odd when something new. <laughs> and you, get, you get the equivalent of a giant hand wave, which is the, you know, like silence. <laughs> you know, like silence <laughs> without saying it. You know, you know, and you feel as if the air that you would use to breathe into your face to spit out words just kind of gets sucked out. And not that you can't breathe, but you lose your, you basically don't have the air to talk. You have the air to breathe. It just stasis. Yeah. Just that snap of fire, you just feel the heat rise all around you. You feel very hot and hard, and that heat is hard to breathe in. But at the same point, it just stops you talking out right. And uh, Mentiak at this point does seem like he's maybe 10 feet closer. He's still very far, but that voice is still the same. But he's moving. You're symbiote like wants to beat the shit out of him <laughs> it just oh, no, has yeah. this this this, yeah. this whole feeling of like you know i can take them you just you just feel this like <laughs> little kid behind you that's like can we can we can we um we can take him <laughs> and you may or may not believe that but at the same point <laughs> there is something of this named demon that is obviously inciting uh, angst and anger and rage uh, also within your own blight the, the ripples and it starts bubbling and pulling and you are concerned that whatever reaction is happening here is also a reaction that Mentiak will probably sense soon yes uh, being someone who's probably associative to it in even a small way he probably can tell and we could we could say out of character um, that in your travels, since you've kind of been traveling nearby the nearby regions, you would know of Mentiak. So you probably would know that he does vehemently despise the blight. And one okay. of the reasons that he is immolating people and branding people and bringing them under his tent is that he believes that it is purifying the blight. He so, slowly is working to clean whatever he can. He's, he's not that like trying to. to do that. That's not his ultimate goal. But it is something he is doing kind of on the side and continues to do. And he, he like, like if, if he knew you were have the blight, he would try to immolate you just because he tried to burn it out of you. Obviously, yeah. Yeah. Um, Pete, uh, yes. with, with my earlier meanderings about camp, mm -hmm. um, would I have any reason to believe that uh, if we were, if one of us specifically was to prove stronger than Mentioc? Would the rest follow us? Yes. Okay. If okay. you could best Mentiak, preferably after he bested the Pestilent Horde, but they are on the run. <laughs> preferably, yeah. Yeah, preferably, because uh, if you do, if you if you don't if you don't wait, then maybe you have to deal with the Pestilent Horde as well. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, he he is the big the big kid on campus right now, and I'm okay. sure that's definitely something that Cipher knows. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh so uh how tall did we mention that he'd probably be? He's about fifteen feet, but he's also like to you the others know that he can change in size. Okay. So he's outdoors so and he can be large, but Yeah, I would I would know that he can obviously be made of flames, he can just kind of expand at will. Yeah, but you like you don't know that about him, so yeah, he like he looks very large and Okay. Um, Never mind, okay. Um, what so, do you do when your symbiote wants to rage against him? Do you find that something you want to embrace, or do you find that it's something that you maybe need to remove yourself from because you're like, I if I keep standing here, it's going to get worse and worse and worse. <laughs> you're kind of at an impasse right now between the two things. So, uh, so I, I know a bit about him, and I know e even though she she did or he seemed a bit out of it at first, I know that there is a rather strong creature close by that if if maybe I were to start something it might end with you know maybe uh, a connection or even because I could sense that there was there was something glorious and battle driven about this angel sure yeah because your, your symbiote did have some kind of a connection to it in he even if you didn't wouldn't have known he's got that aura about him that aura yeah. of inspiration would give would grant you some weird feelings, yeah. Uh, so, what what I will attempt to do 
is um, I will uh, I, I will actually uh, give in to the feeling of of this this fight or flight, and I will I will give the symbiote a chance to because I have been controlling it and giving like all the orders to kind of balance out that connection that we have. I will I will release I will release it uh, as much as I can uh, around me. And I want to try and uh, almost become uh, like armored. I want to like have it calcify or harden as if to uh, help against the heat to give me uh, like a protection. Excellent. Yeah. Um, is that control? Which which yeah. strategy would you like to use? Yeah, I would like. I think we'll do uh, control reason for that. I think Sounds that would good. work. Yeah, it, it wouldn't fight you at all for it. It wants you to do this. So yeah. yeah. So even uh, if you had like a limited time or something, it's like no, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, we good. Yeah, so, we good. <laughs> so it will it will shell me as best it can. Obviously, to not limit movement or anything. So sure. I will, I will definitely, I'll definitely do that. It's if, cool in my head. Like if anybody who's familiar with like dragoons in Final Fantasy, I imagine that. But like uh, so this dark symbiote armor or something. Yeah. yeah. Or even like uh, even like Berserk, if you've ever seen sure, the yeah. anime, just like uh, like yeah. that armor just around them instantly. Um, would you like me to roll anything for that? Please. Yeah, please okay. roll the dice because I just want to see what the outcome is. Especially oh, given that it's going to attract more attention probably in some way. Mistress, we may have a chance soon. <laughs> All right. Yes, perfect. Ready, my minions. So we have a, uh, a success and a fail. Okay. But I think, I think we're going to go ahead and go zealous and try to re-roll my fail. Sure. How does it help you? Um, Seeing as I, I really feel uh, that what whatever I know of him, and I feel my way of getting to the the demon lord, uh, it will need some help. And seeing obviously a creature that has wings, uh, awkward if anything, but <laughs> I I am just going to zealously, like just full frontal. I need to defeat or even inspire this being to fight with me, get the connection, and then use that connection to help me gain my ultimate goal. Excellent. Yeah. Believe in the symbiote. <laughs> Believe the blight. Uh, it is still a fail. Okay. So, so one one. OK. Yeah. Meanwhile, in the tent, sorry to disrupt you, but you didn't oh, even no, know yeah. what was going on with Mentiak. There's a little more tension going on with Mentiak in this strange blighted individual. Um, back in the tent, you were still you were kind of grilling the uh, uh, Telios, uh, Velios. I'm sorry. Um, and Cipher, what are you doing in there? I'm sorry, I kind of cut you off earlier. Oh no worries. Um, my minion is Street. Told me that we might have a chance right now to take on Mentiark. It sounds like a distraction's happening outside. So I have told my minions. Plural, because I now consider Melios <laughs> one of mine. I have all two of them. To ready. <laughs> okay. So, oh god. Yeah, sorry, that's just funny too. Like, if, if if we make it, if the story ends up being amassing your army of minions is like four people, <laughs> and it works. It's not what I was it's saying. It's so cool. So saying. Um, okay. So, uh, sure. So, what is everyone else doing in the tent? Um, as you kind of peek and glimmer, uh, we'll say that, you know, uh, Cypher's the only one who, like, because of where she's standing, can see out the tent and kind of start to see glimmers of what's going on there, that, like, Mentiac's moving, there's a snap of fire, um, there's another individual, there's the, the voice carries, you know, what did you do with them, where did they go, yeah. Also, I just don't know if that's been mentioned, but I, I'm very small, maybe, like, three feet, <laughs> Like, but I stand like I am taller than <laughs> Mentiak. Like I yes. feel like I am queen so, of the universe. Uh, to, to put a size comparison though, do you feel like you are smaller than Isprit? Or are you of the same height? Because that'll kind of make this a little better. Like, are, are, are you literally, yeah. How, uh, how tall are you? Or how small or big? Four to five feet. If everybody else is six to seven feet, I'm four to five feet tall. I might be like slightly smaller, but we're definitely like close. But yeah. it, it 
because I, I like the idea of, of you almost being sm a little smaller than him because you're like my minion and he's like minion <laughs> and I'm, and well, I'm, yeah. you know on top of that I'm crouching a lot like I'm always like a, a yeah. little bit hunched over um, yeah so I just pretty, like if you looked at me you probably wouldn't immediately think like this is someone I should be afraid of but I feel like I am in charge of everything <laughs> I never I never I like crouch down or I'm never hunched I'm always perfectly tall shoulders broad you know the whole <laughs> foot broad that it is <laughs> but I'm just I'm a very small do I do I understand Mintyak? oh yes you do thank you um, okay and we'll say that you're probably smart enough, unless you want to be oblivious, that you recognize he's probably referring to you. Yeah. <laughs> um. And you hear you you actually do not hear the man who's responding, because his voice isn't loud and booming like yeah, that. Um, Mantiak understands him, but you do not. Um, oh, you know what? We could say that for because you have this, you have these angelic powers as well. We could say that yeah, you do hear the individual who's talking. They don't. Okay. Um. And you can tell that he is like shushed. Right. Um, um, so I'm gonna just not worry about my question of whether they're in league with him, and I'm going to attempt to use my aura of inspiration to kind of uh, get them to, or almost. Um, Like, attempt to get them on my side to fight. Like I'm, I, I'm like I, I hear his voice. And <sighs> it, it almost enrages me to go out there and confront him sure. because of what he's doing. So, I look at them, and I say, "I am going out there, and I need your help." Well, I just told you to ready, minion. <laughs> 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 um, why don't you roll your aura anyway? Um, you. See, I feel like it's probably imagined because you're doing it on the spot. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I feel like if we were more connected, it could be, it could be reason. Yeah. But I feel like since it's it's so sudden. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So, imagine and aura. Imagine an aura. <laughs> Okay, imagine I passed, I got a success, and or I got a, the equal, so it didn't pass. Okay, think if there's any tags that would help you. Don't forget your relationship um, tags. I think maybe fanatical. Yeah, I think I can, I think... I was I was aiming towards that earlier. I was thinking about fanatical just because it's going to um, almost like every demon I see, I want to just fight them. It's like, <laughs> you just it's, rage. It's like, just... Even even if I see like earlier when I noticed I was outmanned, outclassed, I'm just so innately want to just fight them. It's just fanatically just go after that. Okay, roll the die. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> yes! Okay. So, um, obviously you're, you're players and I'm the guide, so I'm not going to tell you what to do. I'm just going to say that you both do feel inspired. You feel that for some reason, when this person gives you this plea, that you see back in the reflection of this character's eyes, like a, a being who's got the potential power to be well beyond measure, uh, a being that seems that it could turn the tide, a being that maybe could be a prophesized being. Or maybe the best way to put it would be, why don't we throw it back on you for a second, just to be fun. Uh, Chris? Mm -hmm. I imagine you're probably good for this. What do you see in the angel's eyes when the angel gives you a plea to go fight Mentiak, which is a joke 
the most. <laughs> like, especially you, you're the assassin. You're the guy who sneaks around and waits for the perfect opportunity. It's yeah. not like, hey, Mentiak's outside with this whole horde and we're in his camp and let's go fist fight him. This could be a move. <laughs> I punch fire all the time. <laughs> uh. But what would you see that what, what maybe I, what would I see inspire is, I see, uh, you in this being? Yeah. So what I what I see is that I see a a, a being who, um, you know, even previously he he stood and was carried by the blight, and the blight left him completely unscathed, and the way he's he's, you know, not more pure here, but he's he's untouched by the taint of this world. In such a way that I see a being who could, who could help save Asperia from the blight. And so I see hope there for that. Cipher, what does Cipher see now? Cipher is going to have a twisted inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> I'm already here. I see. Are, are you still kind of like on the ground from when you like crashed into my tent, or <laughs> um, have you stood up? Or I, I'm I probably he's running out. <laughs> Well, I think I, I'm probably like in the, the hero, like the hero dive stance where I'm like kind of like on my knee with like my fist on the ground, you know? That's awesome. I love the hero dive thing. I just need to know how to, how you're standing because I see you kneeling before me. <laughs> <laughs> you're my power. Uh, you are proving yourself to be a worthy minion already. I, I'm ready to send you into battle. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so <laughs> as the guide to the players, um, what I need to know, Aaron, Aaron, do you, what do you, what are your kind of quick intentions? Uh, do you plan to like fight Mentia? Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I, I've given in uh, almost, I guess, like synchronized with the feelings of, of my blight. And I feel like whatever, probably being the only solid thing I see his face is where I want to end up next. Okay. so. I have at least two players that are definitely on board. So what that means is we're ready for a challenge. Uh, a challenge could be anything from a fight to acing a math test if that's hard and needs tension. <laughs> so in this case, we have to defeat Mentiak. Now, of course, defeat is different than kill. It could mean kill or it could mean, you know, banish or destroy. But it could also mean outsmart, escape, convince, etc. Defeat Mentiak. Okay, so what that means is when there's a challenge on my handy dandy a GM sheet where I make notes and stuff, I write down a mind, body, and spirit, the health scores like you have for the challenge. When you defeat any one of these pools collectively, uh, you've defeated the challenge. Um, so we know Mentioc is obviously our true force to be reckoned with physically. So Mentioc has an eight body. Um, <laughs> now to outsmart Mentioc, or to one-up Mentiak in this situation, especially because he has no cue at all that any of you plan to do anything, uh, <laughs> is probably a five. Um, four is like kind of the average situation deal. He is a strategist and overlord and expecting demons to attack him and try to take his throne all the time. He just, nobody does it because he's powerful. Um, so you try to convince him to somehow be defeated, it would all depend on the terms, right? But at the same point, mm -hmm. we'll break his will I'm going to give that a six because there might be a way to convince him, but it'd be really hard to break his will. Um, Being a demon lord and all, he's kind of, yeah. you know, kind of full of it. Now, challenges get three tags of their own. These are clearly the advantages that the tag, that the challenge has over you. Okay. I will use these actively to try to make you reroll your successes when you roll. So these are clearly meant to thwart you. But now if you work to build frame roles in situations where these don't apply, then I have nothing to hold against you. So it does honor your creativity in that way, if, if that comes into play. You can also figure out how to make these work against me and use them against me for your own tag benefits. Cool. Um, so three tags that Mentiac has is, we're gonna say fire, right? Because mm -hmm. he burns the just clearly fire. He is powerful. Um, and he has um, back up, for lack of a better word. We'll say the horde, right? He has he has people here. You're attacking him in his encampment. So he's of fire. He's physically powerful. 
and he has the horde, as in he has his local minions, <laughs> if he needs to use them. Okay. But if you can deal five points to his mind, you defeat him. If you can deal eight points to his body, you defeat him. Or six points to his spirit, you defeat him. Now, how you damage a challenge is we're going to frame rules for an action per character, kind of like an initiative in combat or whatever. And every success you roll does a damage to him. Every failure damages you. Okay. Okay. So, um, I'm really interested in what Jessica is going to do, but obviously, Aaron, you are the first and foremost person who is set up to do something. So mm -hmm. we should start with you. So ultimately, we want to beat the challenge. We want to defeat Mentiak. What's the first thing you want to do to try to defeat Mentiak? Uh, as I said, uh, my first action is probably going to be taken over by uh, simply if how do we how do we judge uh, like say if say if I wanted to perform a physical act and mm -hmm. uh, like let's go with uh, jumping fifteen feet to try and just batter the front end of this stone skull he has. Sure, what, I'm okay uh, with it. It sounds really cool, and that's all that matters. <laughs> the part I care about is did you hurt him or did you get hurt? So that's that's kind okay. of where the role comes in. Yeah. Okay. Is it uh, not, like, so, totally breaking, like, whatever our theme or story is, like, you know, yeah. hey, this is a real serious, gritty drama, and then, like, I, I whip out endless water balloons and hope <laughs> that the water puts out his fire, you know, then we're all like, come on, dude. <laughs> you know, but, like, it's like, look at me pulling this from At least open a portal to a water plane. <laughs> uh, there I know, you go. Right? Yeah. Water bend or something, yeah. <laughs> uh, Sorry, please, go ahead. So, uh, so the way we roll this is the same way with the D10 system, or do we yep. do it's we exactly mention the same. kind of? A, okay, and do it, we have to mention any uh, strategies? Maybe a tag. You were gonna tell me. Were, you were gonna tell me what you cinematically think would be the coolest thing that makes sense of how you want to go about defeating the challenge, and then we're gonna frame okay. that into a roll like normal. And then roll it out like yeah. normal and see how it goes. So, Except for there's so the whole part the, that I'm going to sometimes make you re-roll now when you succeed. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. Which yeah. sucks. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's fantastic because yeah. then I have to, as a character and a player, both converge like my idle thought of what's going to happen into <laughs> like a fluid motion. So then yes, it gets yes. really cool. Excellent. Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, so, like I said, uh, the symbiote encasing me. Uh, without any action for me, really, we'll just uh, push us forward. We will lunge the 15 feet in just like a really stock anime, just like rocket, fists yeah. held high pose. Punch. I yeah, feel like, just, like, like the symbiote itself would almost like snap you forward into action. Yeah, yeah it, just, it just launches me the 15, and I go to strike <laughs> the only solid object that is him. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> What are you striking him with? Uh, it will be the hardened exoskeleton of the symbiote. That awesome. Does it have? Like, does it form something? Is it like this Green Lantern esque fist or spear or <laughs> spike or you know? A spike sounds cool. We can oh, we can say it's like almost like a spike or a drill, just like something very long, yeah. sharp. Excellent. Cool. Piercing. Give, give me a roll. Alrighty. As, uh, as you, you 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 lunge towards Mentiak, and Mentiak being like the stoic ancient being he is, you know, like his head just lifts up and his his mouth never has expression. And there's no smile, there's no fear, there's no nothing. He's just a giant stone monster right before you, basically. <laughs> as his eyes just never widen, never open bigger, they stare at you as you ascend and come closer and then begin to, you know. Uh, and then do t uh, two d tens, correct? Yeah. And in this case, uh, which strategy are you using? Uh, I think we will. Uh, obviously, we will go with by control. Okay. Uh, Sounds like a imagine. Yeah, imagine works because forming and jumping and all the craziness yeah. going on here. All right. Spur of the moment. You're and just like, let's do it. Yeah. We got a double fail. All right. So, no, but it was not, wasn't a double double, just double fail. Uh, I will go ahead and let's use, uh, let's use 
my relationship tag for the symbiote Ooh. of strong because I feel like we are above him. We are going to use all the force we have to do any physical yeah. harm we can to this giant being. Yeah. As you like descend towards him, his, his physical features don't seem to move, but the fire itself grows. And, and the heat emanates, and it goes very strong as you're kind of descending into him. And let's see the reroll. And we got a success with the roll. So we All have right. one and one. One and one. Okay. So he is very powerful, but what I'm setting up is that his flames are so strong that he, he thinks the flames alone could burn you away. Well, determining him. So the fire will uh, make you reroll your success. Okay. And we'll go Let's see. One. Did you get it again? I did. Awesome. Now, and also what's worth mentioning is you always want to remember what that second roll was in case it ever makes a critical. Just throwing that out there for everybody, okay? Um, oh, so uh, so like if I rolled uh, like say an eight or a nine and then re-rolled one and then I got the eight or a nine. Yeah. Or it, bad. Because okay. that, that one die, if we were at the physical table, would still be sitting there with that eight or that nine. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. So if you ever do lock it with another one, then we get that critical effect. So, okay. Okay, cool. So, I will remember that. You both take one point of damage. You okay. were targeting its body because you were physically fighting it. So we both take one point to our body. And does that make sense to everyone else? Since it was yeah. one in one, mm -hmm. there's yeah. no other effect other than we both were hurt in the process. Right the fires rage around you, heating your body, but you're protected by the symbiote. But the symbiote itself is almost covered in flames, and it's now fighting the flames off of you. Um, mm -hmm. But you're... Your drill-like tendril sort of jabbing thing crushes right into the cheek of the stone that's hovering in the fire and actually just shoves it into the flames. Uh, and as it re-emerges, you know, you've chiseled out a part of the cheek. And Mentiac's face shows some expression whether he likes it or not now. <laughs> um, whether he likes it or not. That's surprising. <laughs> just kind of chip out a, a, a little grin. <laughs> yeah. And we have, uh, Josh, you were obviously... you reached out to these two, you see a glimmer in their response. Um, what would you like to do? And don't feel that you have to immediately go fight. You're more than welcome to do that. But you could also, you know, convince them to do something. Anything you do can still be a part of eventually helping us defeat Mentia. Right. Um, I was going to say, how far are they away? Like, are they... Let's say, like... 30, 50 feet, somewhere in that vicinity. Okay. Yeah, enough range that you guys had blinked or fell kind of earlier, so it shouldn't be too far. Yeah. Um, do I see anything, like, weaponish that I would recognize around me? What would you like to see? Um, I think, I mean, I would probably be more accustomed to, like, actual melee, like, like swords or, like, anything similar to that, like... Um, I think that you'd find clubs easily, but a sword is not that, it's not yeah, uh, right. far-reaching, honestly. Um, you'd just be more crude. You know? Yeah, if I see something... Probably not in my tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's, it'd be outside, yeah. Um, <laughs> a broken bottle. You attack a greater demon with a busted bottle? <laughs> You're looking for, like, a laser gun or something. Dirty. That might be laying around. Well, that would be awesome. That would be so awesome. <laughs> just has no idea how to use the technology. <laughs> what is just this? Like, yeah. I'm just like... Yeah. He's trying to use it like a lightsaber. Like, I'm holding <laughs> it down, but it's not swinging. <sighs> Um, uh, I think I'm going to leave them to their own devices. I'm going to rush out there and I'm going to attempt to use my divine touch imaginatively to quench his flames. Ooh, that's awesome. All right. Uh, that's obviously imagined. Yeah. Roll the dice. All right. That's so cool. He doesn't. Any, he, he doesn't see you coming. Actually, he 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 would notice you at the moment that you reach close enough to him. So it's like right when you you would, the impact moment is when his your aura crashes his, and he realizes what you don't know is that he can sense that you're of this being that he hasn't felt anything like in a very very long time. Uh, double success. Awesome. Nice. Uh, all right. So um, the fire could stop you. But you, I think you're trying to quench the fire, so that seems like you've negated that, right? He's uh, like, very powerful, but you're not trying to hurt him. Yeah. Trying and to suppress it. 
he does have many followers, but I do think that you kind of had the element of surprise because you burst out of this tent. So I'm good with it. You double succeed. You need to tell me, does this affect the mind, body, or spirit of Mentiak? Because the player chooses the target. Is this going to manipulate him in a way that's going to make or demoralize him, which would hurt his spirit? Does this outsmart the challenge in a way that, like, you've removed some of his tools? So he's going to be like, well, I can't fight if this isn't a fair fight, you know? Um, or does it – you remove yeah. the fires and he's not as strong. I totally think up to you. Gonna, I think it's going to hurt his spirit more than anything. But it's totally it's... up to you. Just throwing that out there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, no, I, it's definitely one of those things. The power gamer in me wants to go for body because he already hurt his body. But sure. <laughs> well, because here's the thing: Were you out of the tent? Uh, and did you like if you saw me jumping I and? Yeah, I don't think I physically saw you hit him. Because I, I was going to say uh, something that was really big about that. Uh, I would have noticed that even though the impact was great and I was burned, it felt like it didn't do much to him overall. So if you had seen that, uh, it, it could have changed like kind of how you went about affecting yeah. him. I do think I, I'm aiming to um, kind of quench his spirit, his, his, his uh, I don't know, the way... Kind of demoralized him. Yeah, his demoralizing basically sure. trying to, yeah. Okay. Two successes lowers his spirit from six to four. And anytime you get two successes or the challenge gets two successes, tags can be altered. So you can either, in this case, right, remove fire, remove <laughs> powerful, remove the horde, or you could add a tag that maybe everyone else could benefit from using. Um. I think I'm going to go with the, the very typical yeah. remove the fire. Which is perfect, <laughs> right? Yeah. It, yeah. It, it is a very powerful tool because obviously remove yeah. it's one less thing that I can hold against you. Right, right. Um, all right. So moving right along, Jessica, I am so curious what your character is going <laughs> to do. Um, when you wow. peer, if you peek out, out of that tent, you see it's an so angel cool. and a... Uh, I, I want to say like an angel on a demon being? fighting a demon, but it's not really the same thing. You know? Yeah. I think I burst out of my tent and I call out to Mentiak. I'm like, Mentiak, your time has come. Uh, <laughs> bow before me or my minions <laughs> shall smite you on the spot. Uh, I think my strategy that I'm using is that I'm a convincing liar. <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I that's awesome. I'm convinced um, that this is going to go in my favor, and Mentioc should also believe that he is in trouble. Do you think it's imagine a reason? I, 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 I could see it either way. I'm leaning towards imagine because you did on the spot, but you kind of do have everything going for you. Um, I'm gonna also lean toward imagine because it does feel like it was like, yeah. oh, this guy just suddenly appeared, and now we're fighting, and yeah, yeah, no, I'm the one in power. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's me, <laughs> and I, I kind of feel like she may believe this <laughs> yes yes awesome, yeah. awesome. right so i uh, i don't know if it was a lift a lie so it would be I, I would think imaginative as well yeah because i don't think she's lying to me <laughs> in her <laughs> own head imagine and convincing liar Ooh, one success one fail okay any tag oh sorry i i get to choose first here then um i'm gonna say that he still has the horde you know, so what that means is he has an army of people. Um, God, but you know what? I, I don't want to hold it against you because, like, you might win them over. I guess we're going to hold it against you only because if you – you have to kind of convince them because if they doubt him, then he will doubt himself. Mm -hmm. So right. when, you, when you walk out and you're three feet tall and he is giant, <laughs> he's being attacked by two things, but they've seen him fight a horde of – enemies you know like bask in the blood of his enemies and he has all of these people who are all standing up and like bursting into flames and ready to assist and <laughs> you say that um, <laughs> yeah, don't forget you can burn belief if you need to but otherwise feel free to use your tags and continue okay so i'm re-rolling the success from you have the... to re-roll both re-roll both okay. yeah so do that first because you might still just get two successes um 
Meat does not succeed? Unfortunately, yeah. no, yeah. Okay, but I am at two fails currently. Okay. But I think I'm going to use the fact that I disillusioned. Yes. Uh, I am <laughs> so convinced that I am the threat here, that I am in charge here. Yes. These minions don't matter. This guy is going down. Awesome. <laughs> And I have a success. Awesome. Uh, sorry, do I reroll both on my... Just one. Uh, just the one. Just the one? Okay. Yeah, the one later on when your belief gets higher, you'll be able to use more than one tag to get more than one reroll, so... Okay. And you both take one damage to your spirit. He is down to three. Christopher, that brings us to you. All right. What is Asper <clears throat> doing? So, um, earlier, I had, I, you know, when I was sneaking around camp, I had scoped out a very nice vantage point, and I'm going to blink to that vantage point. Excellent. And then I'm going to I'm gonna put my void rifle into its, its single shot, and I'm going to start firing at the minions. Oh, awesome. Okay. Right? right. To, to, try to, to try to take out his... Uh, his horde, yeah. His horde. So, yeah, the, the minions are basically starting to run. And, you know, as, as they realize, wait, these two attackers are powerful. Like, you know, as he's kind of being battered between the two of you, I um, mean, swatting at you, but you, you're both fast and small and strong and agile. And, you know, it's like this epic battle. And they, they're starting to realize, like, wait, he, he didn't call for us because he's too proud at this point. But with his flames out, he's easier to hit and not so massive and um, towering to the two of you. And they are starting to rush to his aid. And But as you grab your, your spot, your void rifle in hand, and maybe start knocking out the ones who are getting to him quickly. So um, I was going to use assassination. Yes. Uh, so they, ima they, imagine they assassination. They can't see me coming. Yeah. yeah. It's imagined, though, because there's more than one. But yeah. 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 So um, it looks like. OK, so I, I got the strategy. Yeah. Um, but because I'm a catalyst for for change, <laughs> nice. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, fire uh, more rapidly into the crowd, and hoping of uh, hitting more people. Bang 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 bang. And that is a success. Awesome. That's two. Yes, sir. Great. Um, you're attacking the horde, so I don't think they're a problem. And he's powerful, but he's really not that powerful. To you because you're not targeting him so uh you deal two that sounds like it's oh wait up to you is it body or spirit because obviously uh, you could be manipulating this one is going to be spirit because uh, if he loses his horde yeah. he won't have the the belief uh, of the people supporting him in his uh his endeavor so uh is that what you're saying he's gonna lose <laughs> yes yes i am <laughs> so um he's down to one spirit um when you start shooting them, what happens? Because it's obviously going to demoralize the others who might rise to help him. Mm -hmm. What do you think happens instead? So uh, as as they start to, to charge at him, they, they're they so used to his, his ability to uh, control the battle through his sheer power um, that when, when they are getting picked off and he's not he's not faring well in the battle, He's seeing his horde lose faith in him, and that that faith lowers him. And the fact that his people, his chosen, his pure and clean of the blight, his purified, are abandoning him and not coming to his aid, uh, demoralizes him to the point that he he no longer feels that this is a fight that he can win, and that if he were to even survive this fight. His horde would have lost so much faith that he wouldn't be able to ascend as the, the demon lord. Okay. Yeah. So he crashes his fist into the ground and and kind of lets out this booming yell, which you know both of you had already heard his voice that it can carry, and it sort of has like a sonic thrust that kind of like launches the the two immediate. Uh, Characters that are attacking him are our fallen angel and our uh, blighted zealot. Um, just throws both of you back, which you can have your epic, uh, you know, warrior lands if you want. Um, in the booming voice, when he slams his fist in the ground, you know, he, he yells out, uh, 
I am the demon lord, Mentiak. In a brief, very small spark of fire begins to light within him, almost as if he's trying to build his own confidence. But you can see that fire as it almost begins to grow to half the size of within him. But he, he, the people around him don't believe in him right now. And the, the, the minions of his own that were charging to help him have all stopped and sort of have their weapons sort of lowered as they're like, we don't want to be a part of the losing side. And that shadow of a doubt actually dims the fire within him and empowers the rest of you as you all basically see a weakened, uh, diminutive, almost a tiny Mentiak because he doesn't have the flames to expand his body to some great size. I mean, he's not three feet tall, but he's, you know, <laughs> he's like seven feet tall. And he has no fire within him. It's a spark, but nothing strong. And with that, we return back to you, um, Aaron. So seeing uh, that he's he's losing himself, his horde, his fire, I realize this may be the perfect time to use the symbiote to almost uh, transfer what is left of his faith and spirit. And so I'm going to try and uh, as I run back up to him in his fallen state, I want to transfuse the symbiote into his being because I know this as I know him is the oh. lowest thing. Like it is, <laughs> it is below him to be blighted. So I want to take and transfuse what I can of the symbiote to drain the last of his spirit. Awesome. What strategy is that? Uh, that will be. Uh, blighted transfusion, All and right. uh, we will go with imagine because instead it. of transfusing, what, what a perfect strategy at this time to have. Right. <laughs> I, I originally got it as a like a, a heal yeah. or way of like yeah, replacing yeah. my own life force with others. But then I thought of it. I was like, I could just transfuse blight into people. Yeah. It, it's definitely not something that I will uh, want to do to anyone. Say that I would love to save. But seeing as this is not worth saving, and I feel like we're in a dire situation, it may be the best way to go about it. Not to mention, your symbiote loves this idea. <laughs> <laughs> he wants it. <laughs> and, and as I need him to be willing to, uh, to do favors that are very against what he is, I feel that uh, a single blighted demon lord, or even... Uh, the essence of him that like goes into what is blighting this low land area will be so much less than what we can cure later with the defeat of this demon prince. Yeah, I, I'm starting to feel like it's it's more like Maurice now. Come on, Seymour, feed me. Give me a roll. Let's see it. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We actually, whoever's singing, continue. We can stop everything else. <laughs> <laughs> I got a double one. So I what? got a double Man. success. Oh my God. Well, double thank double. you very much because what is the absolute best thing that could happen right now? As, as the Horde watches, uh, essentially what he has instilled into them as the lowest of all things, the blight that consumes all in this world, devour the last of his physical being and just simply consume any hope he had, any any spirit left. How does it in eat him? How does it take him? I mean, is it like these little snatchy insects or like, is it like a plant that entangles his essence hmm. or... I like plant. I like I plant. Feel like the uh, we're going with the seals right here. Like that sounds really cool. Yeah. Like, like at his feet, I just simply, uh, the the blight, using me as a vessel, uh, simply starts corroding what is left of his ethereal being, vine by vine, almost like ivy up a tree, sapping its life, and then it collapses. It, if if this is what will happen to him, I don't know if he lives through this. Uh, he does he, not. He, <laughs> tell me he does not. So the essence and all 
command that he is That's giving. You critically succeeded. So, I mean, like, even if I was going to have some plan for him, no, you won. Because, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, the, the dice lords <laughs> told me otherwise. There's no coming back from this. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You see him? So... He's, got, he's got MF and Maurice over there. <laughs> <laughs> Sucks to be meant, yeah. He, uh, oh, he loses all, all control. He, he, like, essentially the Horde loses all faith that he is ever going to be turning the tide of this. And he vanishes into what they expect to be this controlled, blighted being. Okay. He is no more. This is Jessica's milestone. So, Cypher, please take over, because I believe this is going to lead us to amassing an army of minions. <laughs> it's turned to the fourth minute remaining, but, you know, the uh, street didn't shoot down. <laughs> and I will say, see the power that I wield. Join me on the true quest to becoming the demon lord. <laughs> and we'll say that the energy that you that your symbiote is consuming, Aaron, yeah. that you are, like, on your knees as the symbiote itself is, like, just in euphoria as it's basically engulfing the soul and the essence of some being so ancient and so long in of this world of this universe that it, it's just ecstatic joy of the the symbiote it, it's almost like your existence is being stalled right now as the symbiote yeah, itself I, is in I am, euphoria that's so great <laughs> i am the i am the puppet and it becomes the marionette yeah and also conveniently <laughs> um, it, it is there for um, Cypher to walk up and basically, you know, pet or stand above. <laughs> oh my god! They're probably patting you on like the knee, like good work. Pat, pat, pat. You good did. opinion. <laughs> you are Cypher. You are surrounded. Um, I guess quickly, Josh. Where is the fallen angel? Um. Yeah. You, the fallen angel might be in a, like like abhorred right now. Actually. Yeah, I'm very taken aback by the guy that just absorbed the him. <laughs> but I also know that he helped me. He, carried, <laughs> he fought against a demon with me. So, and I also know he's not a demon himself. Or, it's 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 a little bit of a I'm on like the edge with him. So it's, actually, this is a good this is a good key moment. The symbiote is is still attached to me, obviously, but most of it is now off of my being. You probably right. can now see a separate aura between the two. Yeah. So now there's probably something exuding from me personally that you can connect to much more than this evil existence. And I think awesome. this is going to kind of solidify my focus in him that I eventually want to cure him. Or want to find a way for him to be by himself without the symbiote. Like I want to. Sure. Yeah, and you can you can obviously see the strength of character in the human in the being. Yeah. I shouldn't say human that obviously has some sense of control and give and take with this blight, for better or worse. Um, but like you said, inherently helps you know that it's not evil, um, yeah. or he's not evil himself necessarily. Yeah. Um, sorry, back to Jessica. So this is kind of going on as you continue and when you you speak and you walk before um uh, brock basically yeah there are several that begin to walk towards you and the nearest ones bow yes. <laughs> these are demons yeah. of various sorts um you notice that many of them that have been immolated in fire are beginning to lose their fire and are they seem to be reverting back but they're reverting back to these sort of like uh I, i'm in my head for some reason ash man is coming to mind like they are sort of a um freakishly either burned figure but actually I, what i like more is like they're faceless figures because they are like these sort of shells of like made of like grayish shells of former demons that no longer have faces and uh i mean they can see and stuff but you know what i mean like they're no longer these immolated fire beasts but instead are now sort of like shadow men but instead of shadows they're ash men and as they're reverting back to you they're just walking up and more and more are walking up and as they begin i mean you're starting to see more and more people that are just kneeling 
<laughs> before you. <laughs> I don't want to stroke your ego, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would view this as success anyways. This is my character. <laughs> what is the coolest moment for you to have right now? Hmm. These are your minions, and they are being amassed at your behest because of you <clears throat> maybe becoming the Demon Lord. Or if not, you are top dog right now to become a Demon Lord. Uh, I mean, I think this is pretty much the best. They are all bowing around me. I, I am, I've taken control. I have an army. We're going to move forward. I've obviously got this, uh, these two really powerful guys that just joined my side. Uh, <laughs> I became your minions. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. So I've got two really powerful minions. I've got a horde. <laughs> this is great. Okay. <laughs> so we hit our first milestone. So everyone... Um, you get two upgrades to your character when we hit the first milestone, which means that you can look at your character sheet and anything that's got a number value, you can raise by one up to a max of seven, except for Jessica, who can raise things up to eight because it was her milestone that was completed. <clears throat> so if it is a number value, you can raise two things up to seven by one. Um, except for Jessica, who can raise one thing up to eight and one thing up to seven. Um, if you need to add a thing, like you want another strategy, it starts at beginner. If you want another relationship, you just pop it in there or make one of your relationships a group. Um, the only thing you cannot add to is belief right now. Chris just sent me a Snapchat. You may want to mute. Yeah, I was going to say, give me some. This is a hard decision. <laughs> so I, I think I'm going to raise assassination up to expert. Excellent. And then uh, raise body by one. OK. And then I'll be right back because I'm going to go pee. OK. Sounds good. Uh oh. Uh, so do we heal our damage? Yes. Taken or have it yeah, yeah. As soon as the challenge is done, we heal our, our damage. Um, unless, like, a tag stays behind or something like that. Hmm. Man, Jessica, you're just really solidifying that Ludo. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh! Solid fight, guys. Good job. Solid fight. We did it. You guys did so great. Best minions. I, I've got to say, this this is a fantastic system. I really enjoy that it's much more cinematic than number based. Yeah. Which makes yeah. it so much more enjoyable to just play around with the idea of everything. I feel so inspirational right now. <laughs> I'm so inspired. All right, folks. So, what else did uh, people raise? Um, Aaron, did you figure stuff out? What's that? Uh, did you? What did you raise? I'm I'm thinking I might want a, another strategy, but I, I don't even know what to to call or even do. Sure. You keep thinking about it if you want to. And honestly, if you don't have an answer now, I mean, you really could wait till next week. I just if you know now, you know. So I, I think I'm going to raise. Uh, I think I'm going to raise my imagine one. Okay. And then you said. Uh, beginner level, correct, for if we wanted a new strategy? Yep, if you want a new one, starts a beginner. So when uh, when do these tiers kind of come into play when it comes to... Uh... It's reading. Oh, I know. But what do those numbers... Are those... Which one? You mean the rating numbers at the far right? Oh. I had been doing this really. Never mind. I got it. I okay. totally understand now. Sure. Um, um, had a had a few more times that maybe a success or a fail might have changed, but I think overall it was even either side because I didn't even think about the numbers over there. Oh, oh okay. Like your imagine and your reason instead of your yeah. either imagine or reason. I was, yeah. Okay. We're learning. Yeah. Uh, the, reason, the reason it was so weird is because um, I have... 
I have my screen split between a couple of things and I had it open and those numbers were under a margin that pops up for like PDF. It, it's some dumb PDF. Oh thing. no, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And so I didn't even think your, about that. Your PDF viewer was blocking them. Yeah. But uh, remembering the numbers I did roll, I think it still would have come out about even with some of those things. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Like you said, learning. You're cool. Um, Chris, what did you raise? Yes. I raised um, assassination and uh, my body by oh, one. Sorry, I'm. Uh, you were the one I already asked. <laughs> <laughs> You're fine. No worries. Jessica. I think I'm going to raise my imagine by one and my spirit by one. Excellent choices. And Josh. I raised mind by one and I moved my divine touch up to expert. Awesome. Okay, we got two things left we're going to do tonight and probably take about 20 minutes tops. We're going to do vision rolls for the next session, uh, which kind of what Jessica did. And we have gratitude. Um, so I think we should probably do gratitude first and then next week we'll switch it up if need be. Um, what gratitude is, is that simply I want each of you to think about some other player that did something awesome that you enjoyed as a player and tell them. It can't be me, and you should probably not all pick the same person unless that was really awesome and you all need to tell them that. But well, this is player to player, yeah, not like player the character to what was super awesome. Or... It's you as a player, what was awesome in this game session, thanks to who. So I mean, I, I know mine. <laughs> one, of, one of my favorite moments, um, especially kind of the the cool interaction between uh, Chris and myself when he just comes up he's very awkward he's very uh, precise but he 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 needs the information and so he sees a man in a suit and angelic something he just he, <laughs> he can't fathom it it looks very out of place it's white it's crazy information awkward information jumps on my back has to understand is small and then just blinks away, and he's just all over the place. He's just like here, there, here, there, and just like the thought process, thinking from my character, where it's like I'm surrounded in a symbiote constantly. This thing is weird to me. Like that, that was a great moment where it's just like he's there. No, he's on me. I feel him. He's there. He's got the angel. He's cloaked. Where did he go? Like just poof, 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 gone. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Chris? I was I was a really big fan of. Uh... How everything like lined up for Jessica's um, <laughs> self-aggrandizing. <laughs> yeah, I, I I thought it was great how just whenever it needed to happen, somebody was on their knees for some reason, and I it just went thing. like clockwork. It was fantastic. It so was... you're probably you're probably thinking her because she set the precedent. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because she started jumping at it like, oh, so they're bowing to me with the yeah. warrior pose and the angel and stuff. <laughs> and then everyone else just started following Sue, which was great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jessica. Um, I thought it was really awesome when Josh switched his uh, touch to instead of like being a healing thing, yeah. he suppressed those flames and just like devastated uh, Mediac. Yeah, so like, yeah. like being a, like holy like that fire, then you're just like, yeah. no, I know how to like reverse engineer it. <laughs> yeah. You can't see me right now, but I'm bowing. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that was so great. And it was cool because it was a total surprise. Like none of us knew what you were gonna do, and you said that and it was like, Oh, that's awesome. It's like, yeah, no, it's like that, that's the thing. Josh. Like, um I was gonna go with Jessica thing, like the whole thing lining up. I was thinking that exactly <laughs> same thing when Chris started talking, and I was just, oh, geez, now I'm gonna sound like I'm just copying him. <laughs> it was no, that's very, great. Very, very, very cinematic. Like, oh, yeah, it, was, it was great. It was great. I knew I'd have more minions. Yeah, and then Aaron, Aaron being on his knees too when he's like in the euphoria, and she's like, ha ha, yes, <laughs> you know, like, it's just worked out so great. Oh. I, and I, that's just kind of the thing you want to do with gratitude is just it's it's like especially it's a great way to end your session is to remind players like of yeah. how awesome it was and who helped you do what because sometimes you know people leave and they don't realize that you made someone else's day and then you mm. you talk about it with all your friends and they the next time are like well i'm going to try something different this time 
But if they knew what was awesome, they maybe would keep rolling with yeah. So. Oh yeah, I definitely want Jessica to keep misunderstanding what's going on. <laughs> As my terrible evil villain who was disillusioned, I can't. Completely fantastic. I can't wait till that moonbeam shoots something. I, know. I can't wait for that. <laughs> I was half expecting somebody to move yeah. Indioc. Yeah, I I almost threw it back to her because it was her milestone. And uh, I was like. That would be so cool, but I'm like, I don't know. Aaron's right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's like I, reaching for him and all of a sudden. One bad just, roll. <laughs> one bad roll. Flash. Yeah. Okay. Everyone, roll your dice. We're going to do vision rolls for the next meeting. So, our story has been about freeing the demon capital. The first chapter of our story was the milestone amass an army of minions. Now that we have this army of minions and our group is together, we now are going to move on to turning the tide of the assault. So tell me how many successes you get when, whenever you know. Uh, you imagine imagine imagine. Reason? Yep, you roll under imagine and roll under reason. Okay. I have both fails. Okay. Yeah, me too. Okay. Sorry. I have one I, 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 I like it when you double fail. <laughs> yeah, and so now we remove our oh, no. uh, previous milestones uh, modifiers. It's just the tag, yeah. Okay. So, I'm no longer um, Beastmaster? You know, yeah, you're no longer Beastmaster. Um, yeah, and that happens. We're going to introduce something, too, for the next game. I always usually throw it in for the second session, which is how you can get more tags in play. But right. we'll talk about that probably next meeting, just keep it fresh. Um, Josh, how many did you get? Uh, none. None? Chris? Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure it out still. That's okay. Jessica? Yes. How many uh, successes did you get? One. One, okay. So okay. we're going to start with Aaron, because I'm going to go clockwise, and he's I, the I go left most. Well. Okay. So we go zero, then one, then two, right? Number of successes, least the greatest. And I go clockwise amongst the different levels. So, Aaron, the next session is about turning the tide of the assault. Why do mm -hmm. we need to do that? Well, there's obviously going to be some sort of opposition because, uh, you know, overlords usually don't just sit around and go, well, you bested me. I guess <laughs> I'll let that happen. <laughs> so, in some way, we're going to have to possibly use our now... Uh, giant horde of of many kinds of demons and other beings that want to obviously have a better life for themselves in this high city and we're going to need uh we're going to need to change the way some things are working for that to happen gotcha okay and what would your character do to try to change some things to make that work <laughs> um i'm sure we'll have a little bit of time Obviously, that is going to like transpire between us sure. as a group. So I'm going to realize that our small friend, uh, who's definitely our leader, is going to need a champion. Ooh. And uh, I, I would definitely like to be uh, as best as I can to both cure and help us with this goal, become the champion that helps turn the tide of battle. Okay, so. You had zero successes, which means I give you a tag. Mm -hmm. I am going to tag you with the horror. The horror? Yeah, because if you want to be her champion, I'm going to say that you will benefit from being the frightening horror that is her champion. <laughs> of course, how you choose to use that or not use that is how you can play it. <laughs> cool. um, the next person, uh, Josh, right? You got zero? Okay, so Josh, you heard what he said. So of course you can always ditto what he said, or you can go in your own direction or add to it. But why do we need to turn the tide of the assault? Um. Um, I just know that we need to um, be able to get the stairs. So, sure, because um, we need to get the stairs. We need to get to the city. Great stairs. Great stairs. Okay. How would your character go about getting the great stairs to help us? Um, I mean, 
I'm just gonna probably gonna want to dive straight in the defeating that other horde. <laughs> sure. No. Okay. Um, so, but oh, go ahead. Would you would you dive straight in, or would you use any of your strategies, or? Um. I mean, I think I'm gonna end up in, trying to inspire the other, like the new minions. Okay. Inspire minions. So if you want to get to the great stairs, and we need to fight the other horde, so I should probably put fight horde. You were gonna inspire the minions, and you were gonna do that by being. Gosh, I'm thinking of something like powerful, like a champion. Um, I'm thinking you need to be. Oh, cool! You are gonna have the tag. You need to be a myth. Ooh. Oh, nice! Yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, you need to be. Right. You need to be storied in some way, which may burn you because you may yeah. not live up to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, and then who had one success? Chris, who did? Yes. Je Jessica, did you have one success too? Yes, we both had one. Okay, so Chris, you're next. Um, what is, why do we need to turn the tide of the assault? Um, well, right now we, we have powerful, um, champions yeah. right now, but we don't have the, the singular force that was Mentioc. Sure. Need the and force. the, uh, the, the, the pestilence, the armies of pestilence, um, they, they were the, the next strongest here. Yeah. So um, the battle won't be quite as easy as it would have been if Mentioc were here. Oh, I'm seeing. Okay, yeah, I, I took that the wrong way a little bit. I see what you're saying. You were like, you could defeat Mentioc, but you can't just defeat like the leader of the horde. And what's very fitting about that is, I actually was thinking them as almost like a hive mind creature. So it makes a lot more sense, right? Oh you, yeah, yeah. You can take off a head, but there's still eleven more kind of thing. Right. 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 Okay. Um, not not need the force. Um, I'm gonna put hive mind just because the that's that's how I remember it. Nice. And defeat hive mind. Defeat hive mind horde. Okay. How would you care to go about doing that? Um so while while watching a, a battle transpire, if you're if you're far enough removed, you can you can see the the bits and pieces, the the push and pull of a, of a normal battle as it goes down. And if you can identify that, that one piece there and you can take that keystone out, the, the whole army could fall. Mm -hmm. And if I could, if I could get in there and remove that keystone at the crucial instant, you want to sink their battleship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. So you want to get how do I put that in a couple words? Because that linchpin. I, I want to be the knife in the dark. I want to be the knife in the dark. That's fun. Yeah, I like that <laughs> knife in the dark. In the dark. Okay. So with that in mind, players, he needs a tag that represents being a good chess player or being see having the sight to find the key uh, element that needs to be changed or the pinpoint the problem or. Like, I'm almost thinking kind of a psychic almost ability, but that doesn't seem quite right. But he, maybe it's like a foresight. Like, he can realize, like, ah, this is what I need sure. to jump on. For foresight's like good. Um, um, uh, maybe just simply... Yeah. Uh, tactical. Sure. Yeah, because he's obviously like like the same thing would help him with chess, right? Being tactical, knowing when to strike what. Um, I'm trying to think of a really specific word, though. <laughs> Ooh, if we if we want to make it, um, if we want to make it really fun, since we're talking about like the chess yeah. idea. Something around the idea of, of taking the queen. 
because it's obviously the strongest piece on a board. Uh, could, we can even call it that. It could be take the queen. The yeah, queen I, was, I was gonna say is, like, we all kind of get it and checkmate. Oh, yeah, checkmate. checkmate's a good. I was thinking that keyword yeah. there. Yeah. I like it because. Well, I mean, and, you know, on top of that, checkmate doesn't mean you took the king. It means you... You pressure. Well, you you well, made it so that it was inevitable. Like, guaranteed. Right? Yeah, it, you made it inevitable. The king yeah. is going to be taken. Yeah. It's not that you took the king. It's just, I think checkmate works. You yeah. set it up so that... The king is going to be taken, no matter yeah. what the king does. Right. Checkmate it is. I think every, everyone liked it, and they were all going for the same idea, so that sounds great. And last but not least, Jessica, you can, like I said, you're always welcome to ditto. That's the benefit of going last, as you can ditto or you can hear all the other stuff people said and, you know, add, change, you know, whatever, you go in a different direction. But yeah, so why do we need to turn the tide of the assault? Uh, well, turning the tide of the assault seems like the best way for me to become the demon lord. It does. <laughs> we need to, to become demon lord. Okay. And how would you go about turning the tide of the assault? Hmm. Well, I, some powerful allies. I do kind of love that somehow Dr. Evil is going to become a de demon lord. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> one million demons. <laughs> yeah, one million demons. <laughs> Well, Sorry, I just. probably need to find the pestilence horde so that we can take them out. Gotcha. Uh, I'll take have the my pestilence. allies backing me now, or my minions. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your character would kill you for less. <laughs> I see them as the pawns in this chess game, so I gotta, I gotta get them out there. <laughs> she needs a tag, guys. What tag does she need? Impassant. <laughs> I don't know what. That means it's awesome. Uh, when when playing chess, if you do not move a pawn and another is in a specific position, you can actually take the piece in a very strategic way. Uh, it, it it's a pawn impassant usually, but impassant means more or less a a tactical um, like a tactical coup, I guess. What do you guys think? I, I kind of want to put accidental in front of it. <laughs> accidental in song. There you go. It fits. Uh, I'm all aboard. All right. <laughs> accidental in passant. Um, does anybody know how to spell that? Is it I M P A S S A N T E? From what I see, it's E N space P A S S A. Okay. As long as you got it. I started looking it up. I thought of one more thing we have to do, which is simply titles. So. This is just quick. Uh, let's see. So, Aaron, which tag did you use the most today? Uh, hmm. And it doesn't have to be I exact. Guess, I guess stubborn. I think you used stalwart more. Do you think? You might have used them both once. Yeah. Okay. I think I think all I, three. I think you used, used once. strength twice though, didn't you? Yeah, the uh, the symbiote tag I did use. You know what? I'm gonna give you a pass though, because like we had to think about you know like because you were so even kilter. Um, so Chris, um, I I intentionally made it difficult and used a different tag for every occasion. <laughs> that's a okay. No, that, that really is. It's, I mean, it's yeah. kind of it's kind of what it is, and it's yeah. also to sort of like have something on your friends to be like, yeah, so and so the dastardly. You know, like, yeah, exactly. So it's sort of funny. Um, uh, Jessica, did you have one that you used the most? Well, I only used one, and <laughs> it was my disillusioned. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You can it have that one, though, because I like yeah. that. Yeah. So your title is The Disillusioned. Um, oh, no more The Conqueror. <laughs> <laughs> you, can, you can keep The Conqueror next to it. That's fine. The Disillusioned Conqueror. Yeah. But, well, duh. I mean, we know you're disillusioned, but you think you're the conqueror. So, yeah. Um, Josh, <laughs> yeah. Josh, did you have one? Um, I think I used three different ones once. All right. Uh, uh, I want to say drive was used more than once. 
You see, I told you all about yeah. it, so you all purposely tried not to do it. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you should say, okay. All right, gang, is there anything else you have for me? Because otherwise, we're signing off. No, I think that was a fantastic experience, and I think it, it really opened everything, not only that the game allows in like a Venn diagram-esque kind of way, but we also added bubbles that I think you could also really expand upon as you're still developing the system. Oh, sure. And, and not to mention the, uh, you know, what's cool, like you were kind of talking about too, is once you get the first milestone of the way, I mean, you guys basically have set the trajectory for a lot of the story. Like, there's so much now that's just here. Oh, yeah. Um, did we do um, the belief, though? Because I don't know. Oh, thank you. That. Thank you much. Um, you all gained two belief. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, wow. There are ways that you could possibly have gained one or none, but none of those things really happened. So. Nice. You all pretty much accomplished all of your goals without much hesitation, frustration, or, um, you know, arm twisting. So, yeah. <laughs> and no one was defeated by the challenge, um, which is the clearest way of losing belief. So, right. Okay. Well, I'm going to sign us off. We can have a couple minutes off broadcast if you want. But otherwise, thank you, audience. I hope you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Aaron, nice. and yes. Chris, and Jessica, and Josh. Thank you, Pete.